Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another Pokemon card live stream. It's another late night stream and it's another quiet night stream. That's because my in-laws are still here and I'm trying not to shout into the microphone until they have headed out. But they're still here for today and they might be leaving tomorrow at nighttime. So I think that's the I think that's the schedule currently. I have something new to show you. Oh, what do we have here? This is the Great Card Destroyer. This pair of scissors will cut through all the cards, no problem. We've been using these over here. And the problem is, if we try to cut through a whole pack of cards with these scissors, we'll dull them. I'm not worried about doing that with these scissors. They're designed just to cut through tough stuff. They even got a serrated edge like a saw. Isn't that wild? So these are cut right through a whole pack. So now, anytime you guys order me to do a pack cut, I will not open the pack and just cut the expensive card. I will just cut straight through the pack with these. And what's interesting about that is these pair of scissors, they're interesting in the way that, well, over time, this pair of scissors is probably going to cut thousands of dollars of cards over time. So these are the great destroyer of Pokemon cards and baseball cards and whatever it is you feel like snipping. Uh, I don't know why you guys do it, but some people really enjoy cutting cards rather than opening them. I guess there's a little bit of entertainment value. Maybe it's a sort of sadism, masochism kind of thing. But yeah, so you can you can now have your pack cut in style, and it will definitely get crushed by these scissors, okay? Test them on Illustrator PP Metal Card. Ooh, I wonder if it would cut a metal card. Should I should I try to cut metal? You think that would you think that would dull them? I don't know. I'm a little scared to duel them right off the bat. Ah, whoa, it does cut. Oh, my God. Yes, so they do cut through metal. Okay. So that's a thing. <laughs> wow. All right. Anyways, careful with my fingers. <laughs> I'm already feeling the power flow through my hands. Mister, cut a booster box. It will make little marks. I can see those peepee -pee cutters. Good morning from Austria. Good morning, Master Max. Cut a slab. Cut a slab. I suppose we could try that out, too. Let me go see if I can find one. Do I have those little... Uh, I should have those little energy card slabs. Let me go find an energy card slab. Give me a minute. I don't know where I put them last, though. I don't know where the energy card slabs went. They are meant for testing, and that would actually be pretty fun. Hmm. Energy card slab, huh? Give me a minute. Energy card slab might be in here. No. I don't know, man. It could take me a while to find them. I don't know if I want to spend my time doing that. Well, they're certainly not in this box. Maybe it's in this box. Cut through a slab, he said. Oh! Found him. <laughs> okay. So he said cut through a slab, huh? Now I'm a little worried about this exploding. So this is a little thicker. Oh, I don't know. Slab might be winning. Well, see, I don't want to like, I don't want to cause a huge mess and I'm not wearing goggles or anything. Like if I was outside, I would just press down really hard on these. So if it, if it cut through the slab, it wouldn't be a clean cut. Oh, I can feel it going though. I don't know, man. I feel like the slab's gonna explode all over the table and not in the sexy way. Look at that though. Yeah, I'm confident this would cut through, um, but I kind of don't want to because I don't want a big plastic mess of shards and I don't want to poke my eye out with a flying shard. So we we could cut through a slab. I'm I'm pretty confident. I can feel it. I can I can feel it giving way. 
All right, but we'll save that for later. All it really needs to do is cut through a booster pack. That's the only thing it needs. Let's go ahead and get started, guys. We're starting very late tonight. Uh, my in-laws are over here, as I said before. Love your channel. Keep up the awesome videos. Thank you, Phantom Critic. Yeah, so my in-laws are over here, and so we're just going to be talking real quiet. No shouting, no super hypers. Uh, today, we were watching a movie. That's why we started so late. The movie just ended, and then they all went to sleep, and now we're here. Now, there were actually two pre-orders tonight. Funny enough, it was two guys who had the exact same idea. It was Wes Donini and another guy. I think it was a Rocho. Give me a minute. Let's go to all transactions. Whew. Got a little project of mine done. I was keeping track of all my booster boxes that I've got in savings. What is, was it the passion of Christ? That's right. <laughs> Jeff says I had pre-order too. All right, so give me a minute. We'll look up all the pre-orders. All right, so I'm just going to go back. I see Jeff Leon. So here we are. And I will show you real fast. So here's West Donini's order. And here's Sam's order. And West Donini orders 20 packs of Face Collide. And then Sam orders 20 packs of Face Collide. And it appears he also ordered a live custom. So good luck on the live custom. All right, so they had the same idea, even though neither of them knew that the other was going to do that. Uh, but don't worry, I've got enough Fates Collide for both of them. So let's see what happens. So Wes technically ordered first. He's going to get the first 20 packs. Here it goes. Yeah, Wes ordered first. Oops. There we go. They're already sticking together. You were, you were uh, lucky to go so fast there, Wes, because they were on to you, man. Yeah, yesterday night, Mr. Wes Donini, he opened like 10 of these or something like that. And uh, they were kind of cold. And I was telling him he should buy a few more because probably there would be a full art around the corner. I was like warning him. <laughs> and Mr. Orocho was like, oh, full art probably, huh? <laughs> Stick. All right. Okay. We got some Donkey Kong Country playing in the background for now, but we can change the music throughout the stream. Here goes. So the very first pack was actually a Mega Arduino EX. Okay, so I hit right off the bat. Pack number two. That's going to be Break Carbink. Okay, here's Break Carbink. Pack number three. Here's Mandibuzz. Pack number four. Special Energy. Okay, pack number five. Here's Snivy. You said it's from Blisters, right? Yes, Blisters. We got Mega Al Alkazam. I had a... Remember the Steam Siege that I gave away when we hit 20,000 subscribers? And by the way, thank you everyone for the subscribes. We're at like 23,000 on our way to 24,000 subscribers. Can you believe how far we've come? So when we hit 20,000, I gave away a whole case of Steam Siege and they were all in blister packs. That's exactly where these Fates Collide come from. It's the same type of box, uh, but it was for Fates Collide rather than Steam Siege. So he's... Doing, doing pretty good, in my opinion. He's got two EXs already. One of them's the Mega Alakazam, which is a desirable card. All right. Now what? We've got Binacle. Now, I'm hoping he pulls a full art or two. Here's Jigglypuff. 20 packs. I mean, come on. Old Amber Aerodactyl. Here's Carbink. We're pretty far and still no... Oh. <laughs> just as I was speaking. So the first full art comes out, and it is Altaria EX. Hmm. All right. Altaria is not, like, one of the strongest pulls, but I honestly feel like one of the weakest full art pulls is probably, like, the Kingdra. So it's not the Kingdra, but it is the Altaria. Here's Chinchino. 20 packs. We've got another Hollow Tyranitar. So I really feel like the Tyranitar should count as one of the hits. There's Tyranitar. Reverse Hollow Snorlax is in the set. Ooh. I can't imagine Altaria being stronger than Kingdra, though. Hmm, good, good point. Here's Jigglypuff. Two packs left, actually. We only pulled one Full Art. Here's Ammonite. Oh, no. Come on, Full Art. Oh, man. Last pack save. Glaceon Full Arts. 20 packs, two Full Arts, two EXs. That is pretty much the standard pull rate. Uh, you know, two hits every 10 packs. 
And what stands out to me about this order is, is that it was not particularly hot. It wasn't like extra hot, you know what I mean? Which I think is kind of what we were hoping for after he pulled those previous cold packs. Now, you, you're donating these hollows. If you see any you like, just let me know, and I will go ahead and add them to your pile, okay? So, but for now, I'll set them off to the side. That was for Wes Danini. He does pull two full arts. Wes, I was getting nervous for you, man. I was getting mighty nervous. Can we open Japanese Remix? What? <laughs> Tyranitar is all I want. Yeah, that Tyranitar hollow looks fantastic. Glaceon full art, by the way, is a fantastic pull in this set. People, you know, they're really after those Eevee Heroes boxes, but, you know, Eevee, Eevee and Evolutions exist within the other sets, you know what I mean? Okay, so that was for West Donini. Now, Samuel Orocho orders a live pack. Oh, Mr. Sam. And your live is a hollow Suicune. How nice. Two full arts is above average for 20 packs. You know what? You are right. That is correct, actually. You would expect two full arts in about 36 packs. That is a good point. So Mr. Sam also orders the Fates Collide. Now, if I recall, this is about 13 packs. Let's just check it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that is actually 14 packs. Then this empty box gets thrown away. And we bring out this lovely guy. Look at this. How nice is that, Fates Collide? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So that's the rest of my Fates Collide right there. Probably enough for another 20 at least. More than 20. Oops. Unified Mind sticking over there. We don't want that. There we go. Okay. Oh, I forgot to add something to the menu. I forgot. Crimson Invasion is here. All right, Crimson Invasion. So let me go update the description. In order to see the price on Crimson Invasion, you're gonna to need to refresh once I've added it, okay? So give me a second. All right. So we're gonna put it here. And we'll hit save. And Crimson Invasion is officially on the menu again. So if you're wanting some Crimson Invasion, have fun with it. Crimson Invasion actually does have two waifus in it. The Olivia card, that she's pretty sexy. Also, Lusamina is in this set. But the card that you really want is the Hyper Rare or the Full Art Gyarados. Those are the two really good cards in this set. All right, we're ready to go. Let's do it. Sneak. Reprint blah, but great cards. Man's talking about the waifus. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's all about the waifus. Oh, right. There is also a full art energy card. I think it's water energy in the Crimson Invasion set. And honestly, I think that the secret print energy cards are pretty cool. So I think those are always decent pulls. I think those are all basically always a win. But, you know, if you get like full art Buzzwool or whatever his name is, I don't think the Buzzwool will ever be super popular. Guzzlord's in the set. Guzzlord's really unpopular, too, you know what I mean? So I don't think Guzzlord will ever do really well. I love gold energy cards, says God King Lunar. Me, too. That's why I have some. All right, here we are. Sweet. This is for Samuel Arrocho. Tonight's the quiet stream night, guys. My in-laws are here. They are sleeping above and below me, and so we're not going to have any screaming at all. Just nice and quiet. Here we have Power Memory. Why do you get your energy cards graded? Why not? Here's Blaze, uh, Brixen, not Blaziken, Brixen. Barbacle, here's Barbacle. And here's Ryolu. Uh oh, so far cold. Oh, here we go. Well, that's a Regirock EX. Regirock's okay, though. Regirock EX. What's next? Here's Deerling. Might have to turn my fan on. It's so warm in here. Here is another Hollow Tyranitar. What a great pull. Alexia Early's here. What's up, Alexio? 
Here's Carbink. Exploud and Delphox. A Kingdra. <laughs> I was just explaining that I'm not as big a fan of the Kingdra as I am of the Altario. But actually, he doesn't look too bad. He looks kind of fierce in his own way. <laughs> Probably shouldn't hate on any Pokemons. Here's Snivy. Kingdra. <gasps> Oh, Wes, he got the Golden Alakazam. <laughs> so there was one in the box, and it does go to Mr. Uh, Mr. Samuel Orocho. Congratulations, Samuel. So this card is so fantastic. If you guys don't have this card, you definitely need it. Take a close look. Here's Alakazam in the front. He's very easy to see. That's actually Umbreon back here. And also, here's Lugia. So you got three very popular Pokemon on this card. Alakazam, Umbreon, and Lugia. All psychic type. Well, no, he's he's dark, isn't he? But uh, yeah, so it's, what a fantastic card. Okay, so I think we can say Samuel Orocho's doing a little bit better. Let's, let's keep going. Yeah, Sam got lucky. He got the secret print. Oh, man, he's killing it. Third full art. Oh, man. <laughs> Alakazam EX Full Art. Here's Alakazam. Alakazam Spirit Link. You've got a Deonce EX. Okay, just a simple Deonce. Oops. Two packs left. Oh, my God, dude. Fourth Full Art Rockets Handiwork. Yeah, I don't know what to say, Wes. It, it, it really just comes down to luck. I opened up, so the two of you ordered about 40 packs, and I just opened them up in the order that you guys ordered them. You ordered first, he ordered second. <laughs> he just got real lucky, so good for him. <laughs> you resealed those cut cards really well, says Orange Jesus. Oh, yeah, they're all resealed. All right, God, man, I hurt my finger today. That hurt so bad. I took a chunk of my skin out. Okay, so the stream is already off to a good start. Thanks to those pre-orders. That was very fun. You guys get an idea of some of the great cards in the Fates Collide collection. There's still more Fates Collide uh, booster packs remaining, and then I'll be out of them pretty soon. There's also, by the way, a Full Art Umbreon in Fates Collide and a Lugia Break card, neither of which we have seen, so you might chase after those. And who knows, maybe there'll be a, secret, a, a second secret print in there. It's not impossible for that to be true, although the odds are lower, right? So, Samuel Orocho, let's find a bag. Let's find your bag. Shane. Here we are. Oh, that's Agueo. <laughs> Similar names. <laughs> Put all his pulls in the Samuel Agueo's bag. Sam Orocho. We don't have room for you, Sam Orocho. You're going to have to give your cards up. Here they are. All right. That was a hot round. It was. That was definitely a hot round. You even got the Team Rocket full art. You know, I don't have one of those, and I love Team Rocket. I ought to get one. Okay, now, I'm going to go ahead and turn my fan on, and I need a sip. I need a drink. I'm thirsty as heck, man. Oh, dude, this is working? Okay, there it is. Now I have a sip of my drink. Oh, that's better. I really shouldn't rest up there. I should rest over here. Whew. Okay. I just ate dinner too, so I'm like, <laughs> I'm like full, sitting here in the chair. <laughs> Is this a marker? I think I have a marker in my pants. Give me a second. Ugh. Here we are. I did have a marker in my pants. Doesn't sound right. After Samuel Orocho, we have. Who do we have? Jeff Leon. Three Chilling Rain and three Sky Stream. You can keep my hollows. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Oh, mister. Look at this. Doop. And three Chilling Rain. Ah, Chilling Rain. Let's start snipping them. Snip. Snip. And. Sneep. So that goes to Mr. Jeff Leon. Well, hello, TCC. How's it going? Pack number two, 
We've got Rayquaza himself. Rayquaza V. Have I seen the Celebrations Gold Mew card? Uh, I don't think I've seen that yet. I'm excited for the Celebrations, though. Gyarados V as well. Take a look at that. You got two V cards in three packs. Very nice. How about the Chilling Rain? Here's Grapplock, Tatarine. Doug Trio. And Whirlipede Zeraora. Zeraora. You have 30k in time for celebrations. You talking about subscribers? I'll only have that many subscribers by the time celebrations comes out if you guys take a minute and destroy that subscribe button. That's the only way that'll happen. So if you guys want to help with that, you can hit that button right now. Okay. That was for Jeff Leon. Let's go add it to Jeff Leon's bag. Here you go, Jeff. 10K, 20K, 30K. I thought you had it when I saw you got the order in before me, but thanks a ton, bro. There we are. Woo. Alexander Hewitt says five team up and 10 chilling rain. All right, team up. This is my favorite set right now, believe it or not. These Japanese team up packs are my favorite. He wants 10 of the chilling rain. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How nice. Ten of them. All right. Sleep. <laughs> I see that does feel pushed up. Yeah, it does. Sleep. We were watching Terminator 2 with my wife's in laws today. That's what we were doing. Terminator 2, Hasta la Vista, baby. <laughs> Sleep. 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 Great film. Yeah, it was pretty good. Sleep. Mister, which is your favorite set? Uh, Team Rocket. <laughs> Sleep. Can I get a gym break for twenty-one two dollars? That's the price of the box divided by thirty-six. What? What is he talking about? <laughs> I can't let the car destroyer get a hold of my pee pee chew, says Noah. That's right. For the, those of you who are just arriving, we have a new pair of scissors just for cutting booster packs. He is the great destroyer. And he will cut up any booster pack without any fear or hesitation. Those are the ultimate scissors for pack cutting. All right, we've got Raboot. It's Rasputin. This is for Alexander Hewitt. Mr. Alexander, you pull Blissey V. Ooh. The Great Destroyer is here, and he will cut through any card or any pack without ever getting dull. You guys might have missed it, but right at the beginning, we went ahead and cut a, a gold card, a, a metal card, and it just cut right through that metal card. Here's Sneasel. Cut right through it. Scroll of the Skies. Here's Heracross. Oh, mister. Golden Echoing Horn. Ooh. Very nice. Here's Seibold. Grookie. And Larvesta. All right. That's quite a few Pokemons. So out of your Chilling Grain, you end up with the Ultra Rare Echoing Horn and a Blissey V. Okay. Now for these team-ups, right? These team-ups, once again, are for Alexander Hewitt. Welcome back, Alexander. Right off the bat, Charizard Hollow. That's right. Team-ups the best. Team-ups the best. Cold. Here's a headband. Moltres. And a cold pack. All right, so just the Charizard in those packs, but that's a great pull. Alexander Hewitt. He says, I have a bag. Let's go looking for Alexander Hewitt's bag. I believe it's right here. Mr. Alexander. Your bag's ready to ship out, Mr. Alexander. You got a heavy bag. You got a fat bag, mister. Look at that fat bag. James O'Brien says, one oak is one, one goes to the past. I like that you used your little emoji there. One ghost to the past. So this is for our friend, Mr. James O'Brien. Here we are. Yep, Opus One. 
is their Charizard in the English team up. Yes, it's the same same idea as a holographic Charizard. But of course, he's much, much, much harder to pull because he's diluted with a bunch of other hollow pulls. So he's very easy to pull in the Japanese box that you see. Evoker, Devout. Who's this Laguna Rare? Okay, you got Laguna Rare for your hollow. Laguna, Laguna Matata. Here's Mustadio. Cecil, he's rare. Squaw's rare. And Zidane is a legendary. Okay, so we got a legendary here. Boop. Now, how about this ghost of the past? Not a ghost rare. You got Nashadal Genius. <laughs> Seal of Supremacy, Time Thief, Perpetua. Okay, very interesting. Boop. That was for James O'Brien. Thank you, James. James. James is always over here going deep. He's pretty impressive. Now if I can find your bag. Here it is. Mr. James. What are you doing with all this, James? Holy. Okay, put this away. After James, we have Cheese, who says, cut a shining and open five chilling. So now, Mr. Cheese, I can actually do that. So with the Great Destroyer, cut that open. We can actually cut right through the whole pack. There we go. So I'd cut through all these cards and without even doing the scissors. Now it does look like it was two hollows this time, Mr. Cheese. Now he wants me to open five Chilling Rain. Do you see how it just cut through all 11 cards? Didn't get even slightly dull. Let me grab some more Chilling Rain, okay? Those scissors said we don't give a shit. Just cut right through these cards. This Donkey Kong music. Still playing it. It's great Donkey Kong music. I told those scissors to terminate, and then it terminated the cards. <laughs> I watched your minimum wage video. It was recommended to me. Very interesting stuff. I was wondering what your thoughts were five to six minutes after that video prediction. What? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Could you tell me what you're talking about? Because I don't even remember what I might have said. <laughs> Mr. Where are the D-holes? <laughs> All right, here we are. Now, one, two, three, there we go. Woohoo! It was his jobs report video. Oh, the jobs report video. <laughs> Diglet holes. All right, Mr. Cheese. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get for Mr. Cheese. Okay, there we go. Snip. One, two, three, four, and five. All right. Very nice. Let's see what we got here. We've got Hatram, Volcarona. Passimian. Path to the Peak. Oh, no, cheese. And, oh, man, cheese. Cheese, I'm afraid they were five cold packs. Holy. Cheese, you need to get a lucky break again, man. You need some more luck. No waifu. No peonia. He's looking for a peonia. Alex PSX says, cut an NBA prism. 2021. Anything for you, Mr. Alex. So already these scissors have cut through about, well, like 30 something dollars of cards. There we go. So you can see that it cuts through anything, really. Two rookies, but what were those rookies? 
P.J. Washington, Malachi Flynn, and Jalen Smith. Ooh, very interesting. Easy snips. That's $30 the scissors have already destroyed. Pretty crazy. We got Jeremy Helmstadter. Three live customs and four shining fates. Have a bag. How's it going, Jeremy? Jeremy says three live custom boosters. Oh, what's this? You've got one spot in the large. Okay. How about the next two? That's Magnemite and Poipul. All right, so overall, it's still a loss. Darn it. <laughs> overall, gym challenge. That's the box break. We're going to put you over here. Mr. Jeremy, maybe you'll get lucky and pull the large. There it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven spots in the gym large. And then it begins again. Now, he also wanted four Shining Fates. All right, give me a minute for that. One, two, three, four. Four Shining Fates. Ah, oh, mister. More snips, please. The Great Destroyer needs more action. The Great Destroyer can cut through any Pokey Pack. It has no fear in its eyes. Sleep. All right, let's see. Good luck to Jeremy. Jeremy pulls Manaphy, manifesting itself. You've got more Peko V. Oh, Mr. Jeremy. Jeremy, I wish I could go, whoa! like before but I'm just trying to be quiet tonight so I don't wake my in-laws up ball guy in a Veltal how nice Whew. that little double hits helping that's for sure we love double hits here we are you Veltal and another Eveltal holy you just got two Eveltals in a row. Pokemon really said, this guy needs more Eveltal. <laughs> That's for Jeremy Helmstatter. Jeremy, you got it back over here. Somewhere. I think I found it. Here it is. Ooh. Throw that away. <laughs> Mr. Jeremy. Oh, my. Oh, my. Ruben Aguilar. He wants two Sky Stream and two Star Wars. You got it, Mr. Aguilar. Ruben Aguilar. We're now opening up some cards for Mr. Ruben. You know, we got 200 people watching, and it's already 2 a.m. It's really remarkable, guys, and I can't wait to get back on track with my schedule. I can't wait to start the stream at a more reasonable hour. Sneep. By the way, is it the weekend? I think it's the weekend, right? Mikey says, hi, Mr. Daddy. What's up, Mikey? Mikey. Okay, there we go. Now, how about the Blue Sky Stream? What do we got in here? That's cold. And cold. All right. So, unfortunately, the Pokemon card packs are cold. You should do a day stream. I'm going to start doing a day stream. All right. So we've got an Ewok. Here's Luke Skywalker looking very kind of shocked. Bobo Fett. Boo Boo Fett. It's Leia. What a bossy lady. Here's Luke. Star Wars Galaxy. What is this? The Henchmen and. Oh! Stuck together cards. <laughs> 3 a.m. pain. I know. <laughs> Pretty late. Pretty late. All right, in the next pack, what do we have here? Here's Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader with their epic scene. Here's a look at Darth Vader inside of his helmet. Luke on his home planet. The henchman for Mr. Job the Hutt. Ugly Yoda. <laughs> this back card is Lando Calrissian. And the stuck together cards, the sticky cards. A sand person and the trash compactor. All right. 
Hi, mister. Will you be doing pre-orders for Evolving Skies? Um, probably. I don't know. Good question. Okay, so this goes to Mr. Ruben. <laughs> I'm like sitting here. Ruben, Ruben, where am I going to find Ruben's bag? I think Ruben's bag would be up here. Ruben Rodriguez. Ruben Aguilera. Is it Aguilera? I think it's meant to be Ruben Aguilar. I think I might have written down. Yeah, I wrote your name down. It's because we actually have another guy with the last name Aguilera. My bad. Let's get the right name on your bag, okay? <laughs> I know that's you because I wrote your middle name down. That's definitely him. Okay, so let's throw away the other bag. And let's get this all spelled up correctly. How's the line tonight? Well, I don't know, mister. I do not know. Ruben. Here we are. And then how do we spell the last name? Aguilar. There we go. <laughs> Oops. I got marker on my thumb, unfortunately. Well, I've been swimming a lot these last two days and not sleeping a lot. Rage Spirit Gaming says, can you cut five of the My Little Pony packs as a sacrifice to the Poke Gods and open 30 Jet Blacks for the stream for me? Wow, sounds good. So we're gonna cut five My Little Ponies. One, two, three, four, five. So these five packs are being sacrificed to the Poke Gods for Mr. Rage Spirit Gaming. I think the scissors have cut through roughly $45 at this point. Oh, ow. Well, I better be careful with that. Okay, there's one. <laughs> you can hurt your fingers. One. It still takes a lot of it, sort of like energy or pressure to do. Like, I guess it doesn't matter how tough the scissors are. It's just uh, really, you know, you're cutting through this really thick piece of paper. Also, I'm noticing it's creating a mess on the actual table. There it goes. Oh, my Lord. All right, the Great Destroyer, he feeds, or she. I don't know, are the scissors a boy or a girl? Have this, has the scissors decided its gender? Yeah, still requires a lot of energy to cut through such a thick item. And man, look at the mess on the table. Can you guys see that? So it generates a little dust cloud, that's for sure. Okay, you've now cut through the five of these. That was a hollow. Tell you what, I just want you to see your destruction. Oh my Lord, all right. <laughs> I'm gonna need a little broom in here in a minute. Something to sweep all this trash up with. So the scissors have cut through about $45 now, I'd say. Now, he also wants to open 30 Jet Black Stream. That's really cool. Jet Black Stream. If I can reach him, here we are. Cutting money, the scissors don't look impressive. What? Are you mean, do you mean cutting packs up doesn't look impressive? Or do you mean the scissors themselves? Don't look impressive. Because you missed it earlier. It cut right through a metal card just like a minute ago. Yeah, I think it was easier to cut through the metal card than it was through these booster packs. Shows you how tough cardboard can be. One of the cut short videos dropping. Uh oh. <laughs> Maybe we'll cut through a vintage pack. What do you guys think? Here we are. All right, let's get these snipped up for Mr. Rage Spirit Gaming. I appreciate the large order, man. There's a cut video going up tomorrow. <laughs> Mr., you sound upset. Oh, no, I'm not upset, but I can't be very loud. So this is the quiet stream, just like the last two nights. It's got to be real quiet, okay? Shh. No talking. <laughs> my uh, my in-laws are here, and they are sleeping. And I don't want them to be woken up by the sound of me being autistic while I open up Pokemon cards. So we're pretty quiet. We're pretty hush-hush right now. 
And when they leave, I can go back to f sounding excited and happy and not like I'm under a blanket. <laughs> somebody, somebody told me that I sounded congested. <laughs> so that was yesterday. They're like, you sound congested. I was like, no, I'm just, uh, just got to be quiet. That's all. All right, here we are. <laughs> I thought that one was interesting. So this is cold. Here's a Belissi giving you a double smack. Here we are. Belissi. Cold. Mr. Rage Spirit Gaming. What do you think you'll pull? Here's Cresselio. And not Octillery, Grapple Locked. Grapple Locked ripping a tree trunk in half. Make note of that, Trevenant. <laughs> Trevenant and Sudowoodo. <laughs> what do we have here? We've got... Ew, Metal Gross. It's Metal Gross. Look at this Metal Gross. <laughs> metal Gross is one of my favorite cards. Cold. Here's Dracovish. Look at that Dracovish. There we go. Okay, Dracovish. We got Rillaboom. Cold. Here's Greedent. Cancel Elon. <laughs> what? Who's getting canceled? Oh, look at that. The alternative art is Aurora. Looks fantastic. All right. Great pull out of this box. Okay, Weavile. Cold. Cold. Here's Celebi. There we go. That's a cold pack. Here is a Gengar. Cold. Cobalion. Cold. Zeraora. Look at that Zeraora. He's so nice. He's so nice. Here's a Cali Rex. Oh, look, a little Cali Rex. Okay, Cali Rex. Cold. And the last pack is Cali Rex V Max. That was for Rage Spirit Gaming. Is it Raging Spirit? Raging Spirit Gaming. There we go. That's a lot of Japanese bulk. Toss that down here in the junk box. Last pack magic. Yep. Rage Spirit Gaming's up top, I believe. Here it is. Raging Spirit Gaming. You got a wonderful Zorora alternative art. All right. Hope all's well. I know my in-laws sometimes can make me want to call off the wagon, call off the wagon and start shooting jams again. <laughs> yeah, I know. In-laws. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> okay, what's next? Let's go ahead and refresh. I can't even, like, I can't walk around smacking my wife's booty anymore. I don't know about that, man. That's not the way to live. They're going to stay forever. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think they will, but uh, it reminds me of how much I really do actually enjoy having my own place, for sure. <laughs> All right, we're refreshing to see who wants to order next. So far, and, well, we'll see. That is a sign that maybe the line's not too long tonight, but uh, actually I'm just now refreshing. I can see there's plenty of orders. Danny Marks, Jackie Koo, here it is. Yeah, it's not too bad, actually. So next up, we got Jackie Koo with three Supreme Rivals. Oh, Jackie. Let me get those for you, Jackie. Here they are. Mr. has to use String Shot and Silence. Yeah, basically. <laughs> TCCU String Shot. <laughs> it was super effective. <laughs> Sneep. Jackie Koo. Chilled Space Pirate and Chilled. Let the battle begin. Ooh. Here's... Ooh. 
That's a special rare. Supreme Kai of Time. Time Labyrinth Unleashed. Is it super rare or special rare? And here's Android and S S53. No, it's SS3 Bardock. Breaking free from the mask. And you can see he's right there breaking free. How nice. Woohoo. That's for Jackie Koo. Thank you, Jackie. Have a nice sleep, Mr. Pablo. Next up, we have Danny Marks. Three packs of Chilling Rain. I have a bag. Okay, this is for Danny Marks. Mr., can I promote my OnlyFans? <laughs> yes. Here we go. My OnlyFans. Snip. 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 All right, we got all the snips. For Danny Marks. Oh, Danny. Oh, my. We've got Curlio. Here's Swirlix the Rude. Oh, and here is Calyrex. Did I tell you guys I didn't get enough sleep? Holy cow, I didn't get enough sleep. I might have to change music or drink caffeine or something. Yeah, I might run off and grab some caffeine. What do you guys think? Some caffeine? <laughs> it's going to be a long night if I'm yawning like 10 minutes in. So, Danny Marks. Here's Danny. How's it going, Danny? Looks like we also grabbed Dennis Hammer. Cocaine. That's right. Oh, I'm definitely tired. I'm just not getting enough sleep. Staying up too late to hang out with them. OSM. So I stay up here with you guys and do my typical live stream, but then they're awake during the day and, you know, I should be asleep, but I'm like hanging out with them instead. It's pretty dumb. So OSM says five Japanese team up. Ooh, five of them. One, two, three. We got these three buddy, buddies here. You need two more and two more. It is tag team, it's team up. Now he wants a custom boofter. Here's your custom boofter. <coughs> oh my, what is this? We got CGC 8.5 for card number seven. Hmm, what could that be? Me oh my, you pulled Dark Golbat. Ooh, very fancy. Very fancy. Here we are. Ooh, that's for OSM. Ooh, oh, no. Ooh. <laughs> Shipping should be in the overhead overflow. I'm international and already paid $14 and attract transaction. Info for shipping. Okay, so let's find OSM real fast. He said he was overhead. Here's OSM. Snorlax is a girl. Oh, Snorlax. Here, let me go buy you some cards, man. <laughs> Sneep. Okay. Team up. Team up, team down. Cold. Here's a cold pack. Here's a cold pack. Here's Articuno. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, that was perfectly cold. That was a really tough round. I'm so sorry. That was a bad round to team up. Let me get you a pity pull. So we'll get you these two V cards to help out. Those are a gift from Tammy Lowe. Thanks, Tammy. All right. So OSM says he's ready to ship out. And uh, so I'm guessing we've never shipped you before. Let's try opening up stamps and see what we can get done. Okay, and uh, we'll test and see if we've ever shipped OSM before. We have not. Turn the music off for a minute there. And Mr. OSM, I'm opening up your PayPal's. Postal code, email. Okay, good, you got your phone number. That's the important one. Okay, so let's start putting this together, huh? We got your address, we got your name. 
We've got... Give me a second. We got your actual name. <laughs> We've got your city. I think your city is Oakville. <laughs> I'm getting a little better with Canadian and UK addresses. Okay, and we got your postal code. Look at that postal code. That's so nice of you, OSM. OSM just knows exactly what I'm looking for. Canada. Oh, Canada. Do, 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 do. Okay, we've got your phone number. Here's your phone. Now, I apologize if I don't read too many comments, but I can't look at them while I'm getting this label filled out. So I know you guys are probably talking to me. There we go. And we're going to choose sending this first class, which is the cheaper method. Enter a valid email. Uh, it doesn't like your email. Give me a second. Let me look again. Let me just grab your, I'm going to grab your PayPal email. Okay. So we're grabbing the PayPal email. There we go. We've grabbed the PayPal email. Let's try this again. Okay. There we go. It took that. We're going to send this as merchandise, trading cards. Okay. We're going to say it's about eight ounces. And then let's say it has a value of $20, which is actually greatly understating what it might be worth. But that's okay, because in theory it could be worth $20 if you just sold it for $20. Okay. And that is an international label. I'll click plus S, question mark. So I'll, go, I'll be double checking for other slabs that you might own. Set the commodity as pleasure toys. <laughs> I love it. Let's turn that music back on. And I'm going to run off and get something to drink, guys. I need caffeine very badly. I can tell I'm just too tired. It's from lack of sleep. I'll be right back. freaking out because everyone's over here she hasn't been having a good time <laughs> she's like this is my home get out of here she swiped at my brother-in-law's foot and made him bleed aha uh -huh. Ooh. there we go so that should help considerably my question is where can i put this I need a place where i can put that drink push that over to the side Ooh. I'd get a uh, sponsorship from Monster. You think they'd do that? Ooh. Oh, Lordy. Okay, that should help. So, even the taste of it makes me wake up a little more. You know what I mean? I have that in my fridge. <laughs> I had that before it was good. <laughs> what? Before everyone else wanted it. Okay, so we're gonna go back and find OSM to order again. And that's the checkpoint, right? That was the last one we were working on. Here it is. So we're done with Mr. OSM. Now we're moved on to Michael Cusick. Michael has a real big order. He wants 10 chilling and two cosmic. 10 chilling, two cosmic. Man, I can't wait to yell again. I haven't been able to yell in the live stream. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, I suppose I could just yell. It doesn't matter, but I mean. So, two Cosmic. You gotta be careful with those Cosmics, man, because they're crazy expensive. Does that taste as good as family? Because nothing is greater than family. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Dom. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Blueberry, red, blue. Ugh. I tried the watermelon flavor monster drink. It was okay. Sneep. 
Cosmic is too big of a set. Sleep. Chilling Rain is a pretty large set. I mean, it's got like six golden cards in it, doesn't it? Just Pokemon. There's also golden trainer cards, too, on top of that. Cosmic, Cosmic. We need some better music, too. I think that this music's putting me to sleep. So we want something that wakes you up a little more. How about Towns and Cities? All right, that's a little more jarring. So that might help me stay awake, too. Here we go. So we got Tapu Fini. Sets are getting too big. I think that's great when sets are big. Here's Melanie. Here's Avery. Ladybug. Old Cemetery. Here's Crabrawler. Oh, man, these are cold so far. Thwacky and Rune Rigis. Oh, man. This is a really tough round. I have two cases of Cosmic. I paid like $1,100 per case. Should I sell them or keep them? I'd say keep them. I'd say keep them. Here's Urshifu. And what's this? Metal Gross. You got one Metal Gross VMAX out of 10 packs. That's pretty hard, man. That's uh, not a lot of pulls. But before we feel too bad for you, let's find out what's in your Cosmic. Cosmic is a dope set. Sleep. Sleep. All right, got a few sneeps going on. King the German Shepherd says, I just can't with, with the Cosmic. Here's Mag Cargo and pack number two. Well, you have a very cold round, Mr. Michael Cusick. That's Michael Cusick, right? Yes, Michael Cusick. Michael Cusick, let's get you some pity pulls. How about a... We've got a lot, but they're mostly just the birds. How about we get you three pity pulls here, Mr. Michael Cusick, because your round was so tough. I'm sorry, Michael. I am so sorry. I wish every time I open packs, you pull the Charizard. I really do. That's the way I would do it. But then the Charizard wouldn't be seen as worth anything, you know? Next up, we, we need 20 more Fates Collide for Wes Donini. Wow. Wes really said, I ain't quitting until I got what I want. Okay. One, two, three, four. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we are a bit low on Fates Collide now. That's about all we have left. Holy Jesus, man. That's a lot of Fates. <laughs> fates Collide. Here it goes. Sleep. 1, 2, Three, four. I don't think I have a case of Fates Collide. I really ought to. Fates Collide, what a great set. Sleep. Sleep. Do, 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 Imagine being the guy who wrote that iconic music. Sneep. All right. That's 20 packs of Fates Collide for our good friend, Mr. West Donini. Let's pull you another Golden Alakazam. Again, I think there's a chance for one. I'm not saying there is going to be another, but I've seen it happen. So here's King of Skond. So do people donate to buy packs so they own the cards open on stream? Yeah. And it's more like you're buying the cards. So the cards really are yours. Here's Tyranitar. Look at this Tyranitar. Okay. Here's Deerling. Okay. Here is Meowth. What exactly do card prepping services do to the card that makes it easier for grading? Are you talking about card grading middlemen? Oh, you pull another Altaria. <laughs> so there were two Altarias in the box. There could have been two Golden Alakazams. Here's a gold, or here's a Genesect EX. Okay, we got Genesect EX. 
Here's, oh, that's actually a hit. Lugia Break. Excellent. So the Lugia Break might be valued around $400. Here's a Wormadon. That's a Lugia Non-Hollow. Here is a Larvitar. Speaking of which, I don't think we've seen a, a Lugia Reverse Hollow come out of this set yet. Servine. Lucario White Caillou Ram. So far, the Lugia Break has been the most valuable card. A lot of people don't associate wealth with the Break cards, but I actually do. Here's Ryolu. The Break cards are a hit. I consider them a valuable pull. What happened to your thumb? What? <laughs> Audino. Now, I've heard people call this Audino. Is that how you say it? Here's Audino EX. Okay, Audino EX. Burmy and White Kyurum again. Do people grade break cards? You absolutely should grade your break cards. Here's Fairy Drop. You got one more pack. Can we get one pack luck? Come on. No, not this time. That's Vullaby. Okay. Vullaby. I started liking them. They're unique. I pulled Lugia Break a few months ago. Yeah, you know, the Lugia Break, again, Lugia Break's going for like $400. I've seen a really nice-looking Veltal, really nice-looking Xerneas. I've seen a really nice-looking Hydreigon. They're cool cards. Now, if you got like Break Starmie, Break Starmie's never going to be popular because it's, you know, Starmie. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Starmie's just not that popular. Starmie sucks. All right. So let's take a close look. You do pull the Lugia, and you pull a Full Art Altaria, and then you've got... Audino and Genesect. Ooh. There you go, Mr. Wes Donini. Wes went very deep on the Fates Collide. Whew. Do, 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 do. Do, Scooby, do, do. So Matthew Mangiello's next, and he says, One live custom, one blue sky stream. Wife spent all my Pokemon money today. No! <laughs> Doesn't she understand how important Pokemon cards are? Why I've spent all my Pokemon money today. <laughs> all right. I cannot believe I have any of this left. Here's your one. Oops. Here's your blue sky stream. Mom! <laughs> Still yawning, <gasps> but it's not as bad as before. I feel I do feel a little more awake. So Matthew Mangiello pulls Sneasel. He's so sneaky. He's such a sneaky little Sneasel. Sneak. Matthew Mangiello is simple, man. Just sell the wife's wedding ring and get yourself a nice Charizard with it. Cold. Ooh, sorry, Matthew. That is not a hit. Just tell her, honey, I'm going to need to sell your wedding ring. Very urgent. I need the money. She'd be like, what could possibly be more important than my wedding ring? And you just look her dead in the eye and say, Charizard. Charizard is more important. Here's Randall Miller. Hello, Randall. So Randall Miller, sa Miller says, Sword and Shield, Blue Sky Stream, Randall Miller, I have a bag. All right, sounds good. We've got two Sky Blue script Streams. <laughs> Has anyone got the alternative Rayquaza yet out? Uh, he's been pulled already. Don't buy any more. He's already been pulled. <laughs> Here is... Oh! Gyarados. Look at this Gyarados. Did I play the Pokemon video games growing up? Yes. Yes, I did. Here's Volcarona. How nice. Oops. There we go. Are the bulk boxes all Pokemon bulk? Uh, the the junk box is mixed, and it, it doesn't include any English Pokemon cards. And then the bulk brick is only English Pokemon cards, okay? So, Mr. Randall, he says he has a bag. Let's go looking for it, Randall. Richard, Russ, Ran, Ryan, Ricardo... Ryan, Randall Miller. All right. Thank you, Randall. Mister, are you ever going to sell slabs again? Uh, maybe, but 
for right now, it's just not something that I think uh, fits very well into the stream, okay? Right now, I think the best use of my time is to focus on prepping for the stream, and then when the stream is live, to just place them into the live customs. When, when I was... When I was selling the slabs, the problem is I'd have all these slabs and, you know, you guys were always like, rotate the slabs. Can you price this slab? And, you know, was, I actually ended up not liking that. Now we have Manuel Garcia. He wants one custom, one blue sky stream. All right, Manuel. I just don't think I have time to price them. You got a Badoof. Badoof's perfect, man. You got a perfect Badoof. There we go, Badoof. One blue sky stream. Okay, here's your blue sky stream. Right. Snip. Oops. A cold one. So that was for our friend Manuel Garcia. He says, I have a bag. All right, Mr. Manuel Garcia, let's find his bag. Manuel Garcia. I have a bag, mister. I feel like we're going to look over here first. Marvin Leon with one card. Mike Spanos. Mikey TV. So, like, this whole box is just full of old M bags that nobody is taking, taking care to ship. Here we are, Mr. Manuel Garcia. Welcome back, Manuel. Here we are. Sweet. Now we have Sylvester Sands, two Star Wars Bofter. Bofter? <laughs> Let me have another sip. I'll have a little, little sip here. Oh, so good. Eight premium cards. Ooh. So, Mr. Sylvester. Sleep. How long have we been going for, says Augie. Augie, we've been going for about 67 minutes. I started very late. Okay. France now has a vaccine passport. Bro, it's getting bad. Oh, man. <laughs> it's the new world order. So we got Darth Vader, Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, Here's the henchman for Mr. Jabba the Hutt. Here's the Sandman. Oh, there we go. Yoda. <laughs> and these two stuck together cards, which is Yoda and the droids. I've taken patience with the slug in the brain still talking conscious, so anything is survivable. Here we are. Pack number two. I really don't mind governments, you know, subsidizing vaccines and all that and telling you you should go get one, advertising, handing out rewards, whatever they want to do. But man, when you when you say you have to take this medicine or you're not going to get a passport, I think that just goes too far. You know, I don't, I don't think that's good for democracy. I think it's kind of anti-democracy. Oh, you got one of the layers. So that's my feelings on that subject. Here's an early drawing of an AT, at but then they eventually look like this, guys. How cool is that? All right. I have the vaccine, but I stand for people's right to choose. Here we are. <laughs> Primal fear and visions of ruined card arts. Oh, yeah. Well, this one looks pretty clean. Ooh. And this one has the boobies on it, so obviously it's the most valuable. That goes to Sylvester. Sylvester Sands. Mr. Sylvester. Oh, you pulled Chewbacca and C C-3PO earlier. Now you just need the other six in the collection. So there's a total of six of these full arts. I think there's one we've never seen before. Would you say Antichrist, mister? It's the Antichrist. Oh, no. I promise I will not put a mask on again so you guys may end end up seeing me in the news one day, says Jormo. <laughs> oh, Jormo. Oscar Robles. He says... I'll get six chilling rain. You got it, Mr. Oscar. Oh, Mr. Oscar. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. The box is falling over. Yeah, let me just do this. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. All right. And we'll turn these sideways. 
There we go. Make it a little easier for me to grab. <laughs> Oscar Robles. He says he already has a bag. You sure do. Wow, we have 235 viewers. I'm really impressed with that because we started at an irregular time. We started very late. We we're supposed to start at 12 a.m. We started almost at like 1.40. So we must just have a lot of people watching or a lot of people who want to watch. This is actually very cool, guys. I just snapped, mister. I had to do it. What did you do? Did you buy some Legos? Okay, Oscar Robles. I want to make sure my little order isn't stuck in some type of limbo. I feel like last time it didn't show up right for you either, says Jacob. Sounds good, Jacob. Here's Urshifu and Tornadus. Look at that Tornadus Fullard. Now, he is an off-center Tornadus. Mary says, Cheese, my Lily got a 10. We don't actually know that, Cheese. However, I did get contacted by PSA, and they told me that we didn't pay enough for the card grade. So, typically, that's a sign that the card graded well. Uh, but it's not a guaranteed good grade. So maybe it's just a nine, and they they think the card's worth like a bazillion dollars. I don't know. But we we uh, sent it in Express. And uh, what is the upper limit for the value of an Express card? I don't even remember. Here's a Fan of Waves golden card. All right, golden Fan of Waves. Mary says, stop snitching, bro. Yeah, if, if her Lily gets a 10, I think that'll be really cool. And maybe we'll even put it in auction for her. Okay. Now you also need a hidden fates, I hear. I hear. I hear. <laughs> Here we go. One hidden fates right there. They shouldn't upcharge unless they want to personally buy the card for that much. Uh, PSA has gotten really tough about upcharging on cards. It's been happening over and over again. All right, that is just one hollow Charmander out of that pack. That's for Oscar Robles. Here you go, Mr. Robles. What a totally not ransom business practice. Yeah, I agree. It's it's not very, uh, I don't like it at all, but I don't know. That's their business model. Up charge, up charge, up charge. The moment they know you have a valuable card, they know that they can take more money from you. <laughs> That's basically what it is. Now we've got Sven Krill. He says, one Yu-Gi-Oh! Ghost from the past. Okay, one Yu-Gi-Oh! Ghost from the past. <laughs> Here we are. One Final Fantasy Opus 11. That's a Tifa pack. I almost can't reach it. There we go. Okay, Tifa. Two Dragon Ball Z Supreme Rivals. Okay, here's Supreme Rivals. One NBA Chronicles. Okay, NBA Chronicles. Why are you ordering like everything but Pokemon? <laughs> now you also want an NBA Contenders. Okay, NBA Contenders. Now are Chronicles sold out? No, they're not. Okay. <laughs> I would never get the 666. Can I use the D Disney logo? What are you talking about? So this is for Sven Krill. Hello, Sven. Welcome to another quiet stream, the stream where I'm not very loud because my in-laws are here. Sneep. 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 All right, all sneaked up. So nice. Man, those team ups so cold. Should I get more? <laughs> it's up to you, man. Here's Dragoonity Arma, Metal Foes, Arc Brave, Hieratic Seal. Up to you, man. Because you don't know if somebody's already dipped in to try and hit something hot. But maybe they haven't. You just don't know. You know, it's, it's all risk, isn't it? Fencer, I barely know her. Rig, Kronos, Porum, yeah. And Selkie, here's C-O-E-U-R-L, Okay, he's a common. Rosa Rare and Reno. Okay, cool. Cool. So from your Final Fantasy, here's your hollow. It's not a very important hollow. However, you do get three waifus. Look at those waifus. Oh, hot damn. Furry? I didn't know you were a furry. What the... Apparently, those Ghost Rare Yugi's are the hardest to get a Ghost Rare. Yeah, I've heard about that. They're very hard to pull. 
Here is a Full Power Unleashed. Wow. Has anyone pulled a Ghost Rare on stream in the past? It has happened before. Here's Krillin Energy Fortification. Okay, what do we have over here? We've got... So this is the Chronicles. Chronicles. Nicola Melli. Now, this isn't a rookie card, so we don't care about that too much. But here is Jason Hayes, rookie. Here is R.J. Barrett. Okay, R.J. Barrett. Here is Romeo Langford. Hendrick Nunn, rookie. Okay, so those are your Chronicles. We're going to do your contenders next. James Harden, Bam, Kendra, Jarrett, Seku, Jason. Now, here's your special card. You've got Seku Dumbuya. And this says contenders, but it's got a special red -like logo. So I think that's actually a bit more valuable. And here's Jaden McDaniels. Ooh, rookie card. Okay, very nice. And that appears to be all of them. The economy's crashing. What are you talking about, Bull City? The economy's doing fine. All of this is for our good friend, Mr. Sven Kills. Krills. <laughs> I got a bag, he says. Mr. Sven. Can't wait to open and put these into your bag. Starwin. Sergio. PPO. Sven Krill. Here you are, Sven. Giannis. You got the Giannis, huh? Do 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 do. Scoop be do. Now the S box is full, and Mr. Sven, you've got some sport cards. Let me put you over here in a sport box, okay, Mr. Sven? Whew. Shane Childers is next. I would like ten Roaring Skies packs. Oh, I might not have ten. That's unbroken bonds. Hmm. So I'm going to have to do a search for 10 of them. Actually, maybe I do have 10. How's it going, Mangiello? Mangiello, you said something about a trade, but I actually don't remember. I've been getting an awful lot of offers lately on trades. I've been getting an awful lot of offers right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, we actually do have ten. We have a total of eleven. Ow. Ooh, that hurt. <laughs> Look at my finger here. You can't really see that, but that's actually kind of like a, a deep cut I got on the tip of my finger. I just yanked the skin back there. It was in the score my Prism Mega uh, Megas for uh, Charizard. I don't know, man. Where, wait, were you saying you were offering me that, or are you asking my opinion on the trade? Here we are. Back number two. Three. We got some Roaring Skies. Are those all the Roaring Skies you have? I might have a little more if I go looking. But right now, uh, I can't guarantee how many that I have. I might have like five more. How am I Brony? I just got like five pony packs. Well, only bronies, only closeted bronies would bother cutting pony packs. You know what I mean? If you just have 11, I'll send for the last one. Sounds good. So he would like to open up the last one as well. Don't out me like that, TCC. <laughs> too much. Kitty's watching. She's watching me make all that trash. But you say doctor is the best. Sorry, Taplock. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go, Mark. The Roaring Skies is sold out. Oops. There we go. Now, this is going to be for our friend, Mr. Shane Childers. He's gone deep in the Roaring Skies.
How many goes from the past packs you have left? Not that many. Ten, maybe? Couldn't be much more than ten. Maybe less than ten. Okay, we've got a sneep and a snoop. And a steep snoop. Sneep. Sneep. I will not be restocking Ghost of the Past. I actually did not like Ghost of the Past at all. Ghost of the Past, it's it's too like it's too punishing in my opinion. Oh, we've got Toga Kiss, and this one looks pretty good, pretty well centered. However, it is a little little thinner on the left. So I like your toga kiss. That's a good start. Here's Palper. And Altario. Here's Dust. Oh, this is definitely one of those hollows. You should you should really consider grading. Now the problem with this Deoxys is he is thin on the bottom. You can see that. But this artwork for the Deoxys is so top-notch. Look at this Deoxys, guys. And I want to point something out. There's just not a lot of good Deoxys modern cards. So I think that that should definitely be graded. That should definitely be up for consideration for grading. All right. <laughs> Let's keep moving. All right, we got Natu. Firo Bonnet. Uh, Talo on Pheasant. Look at this reverse Hollow Dragonite and Hollow Reshiram. Wow, the Hollows in this set are fantastic. Dun Sparse. Inke Reshiram again. Firo. All right, here's the 11th pack. Ah. Wow, that was really cold, I'd say. We didn't see an EX or Full Art come out at all. I don't think so. Holy. Those came right out of blisters. You saw it yourself. Those were just very unlucky blisters. You got one Togekiss and, and one Deoxys, which I do believe this is a hit. That is my opinion on it. Uh, but the rest is bad. That was 10 packs. No, I don't know. That's pretty rough, guys. God damn, dude. I tell you what, Mr. Shane, I'll go ahead and toss you some of these pity pulls, okay? So we've got Sylveon and Jolteon pity pulls. I apologize for how tough that is, man. <laughs> that is just how it goes sometimes. Here we are, Mr. Shane Childers. Can girls be simps? Here we are, Shane Childers. Shane, you're not fitting up top anymore. Um, Shane Childers, I'm putting you in the overflow now, Shane. After Shane Childers, we have Jeff Leon. He says, one Cosmic, three Sky Stream. Okay, one Cosmic and three Sky Stream. Darn, I was hoping some, for some really cool pulls out of those Roaring Skies. We got a sneak going. Sneak. All right, those are nice and sneak. This is for our friend Jeff Leon. Jeff, you pull Flygon GX. All right. One pack, one Flygon. Here is the Blue Sky Stream. Blue Sky Stream. Cold. Zygarde. And Rayquaza. Here we are. There we go. Sweet. That's for Jeff Leon. And Jeff, you're up here. Here you go, Jeff.
Okay, now we have Starwin. Mr. Starwin, he wants two chilling rain. Two chilling rain. One and two. Here it is. Do you mind looking at my Melanie I pulled yesterday? Was curious about the centering. Okay. Oops. Here's pack number one. Peony. Is it Peony and Pionia? Is that his daughter? Maybe that's his daughter. Okay, there's Zapdos. And Kecleon. Kek, Kek, Kek. We're Kekking over here with Kecleon. Mr. Star, when you're in here, saw your bag earlier. Stephen Demas, Starwin. Now he wants to know about his Boobany. I'd say Boobany is a little thin on the right. Boobany is a little thin on the right. There you go, mister. After Starwin, we have Jacob Thomas. He wants a Silver Lance, a Jet Black, and a Digimon. Oh, one Digimon. Mom, I want some Digimons. Okay, here's a Digimon. Mom! I'm surprised we haven't had anyone cut the Digimons. Okay, here we are. Sneep. Sneep. Do, 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 do. Oh, what do we have back here? Whoosh. Metal Seedramon. You got Metal Seedramon. You did it, mister. Wow. Mom. <laughs> Here's Metal Seedramon. That is for our friend, Mr. Jacob Thomas. Jacob Thomas didn't mention the status of his bag. Jacob, if you could just tell me if you have a bag or not, that'd be a really good idea. Let's go on the hunt for Jacob Thomas's bag. Jedediah, James O'Hara, Jesus, Javier, Javier Arroyo. So, I don't think that's going to be it. How about up here? Looks like bootleg Rayquaza. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. So, I don't think he's going to be up here. So, we're going to need to make a new bag for Jacob Thomas. I heard Digimon is loosely based on World War II. Dude, everything's based on World War II. Here we are, Mr. Jacob. Jacob Thomas. Even like Harry Potter, right? Harry Potter. So you got Star Wars was loosely based on World War II. And you got Harry Potter was as well. Harry Potter, the whole like mud blood versus pure blood kind of shit. You know what I mean? The Death Eaters, a.k.a. the Nazis. Alexander Hewitt says 10 team up and tier 1 no sub on the Charizard. Good choice. World War II was based on World War II. That's right. Jarmo says, wow, that's true. Yeah, the Death Eaters, they're, they're just the Nazi party. That's all it is. Nobody's got any original ideas for bad guys these days. Not that I dislike Harry Potter. I actually really enjoyed Harry Potter. Great, great, uh, book and the adaptation was decent so let's go ahead and give me a second i gotta get more of the uh, team ups so this will take me a second all right here we are some nice team ups here. Do, 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 do. Is Thanos based on World War II? <laughs> I'm sure a lot of Marvel bad guys were inspired by World War II. So, how many do you order? He ordered 10, right? 10. And we got two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, here we are. All right. 
Mister, hope you're doing well. And he says, have a great weekend all the way from the UK. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Sleep. Half-Blood Prince movie was awful. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince by J.K. Rowling. Are Oreos based on World War II? That's right. <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> Alexander Hewitt. You know, uh, the Nazis hated Oreos, if you guys didn't know that. This is a historical fact. The Nazis saw Oreos as two black cookies with a little white in the middle, and they weren't okay with that sort of black-white mixing. You know what I mean? They wanted a pure white Oreo. So, yeah, American Oreo cookie was very well hated by the Nazis. All right, what do we got here? We've got a coal one. Oreos have a Freemason sign. <laughs> oh, my God. Pokemon World 1, World War II. Feel old yet? Here's... They do actually have a vanilla Oreo cookie out these days. Diggies aren't just based on World War II, but once Mr. opens enough, one special diggy will open a time portal, giving us a chance to go back and eliminate Hitler while he's a struggling artist. Well, you don't need to eliminate him. And all you need to do is go back in time and make him a successful artist, and then he probably would, would have never gotten involved with the military. That would have changed the entire course of history, if you think about it. Ah, oh, man. That was a tough round of team-up. You pulled one GX. You just pulled one GX. But the other thing that you did is amongst all of these hollows, you didn't pull any Blastoise or any Charizard. So that is a tough round of team-up. For Mr. Alexander Hewitt, let's get you a little bonus pull, okay, Alexander? All right, a little bonus pull to help you out a little bit. That's a gift from Tammy Lowe. Sorry, Alexander. Where did we last see your bag? Here it is. Alexander Hewitt. It's better to pull a Charizard, isn't it? Now, the Latios Latios is still pretty valuable, by the way. All right, there we go. All you got to do is go back in time and make Hitler a successful artist rather than a, a failed artist. And he would be like, maybe I won't do this whole war thing. Maybe I'll just, I don't know, maybe I'll just paint pictures. <laughs> These are all nines. Where are my tens? Here's a gold back ten. That's kind of cool. Oh. All right, then. Arbok ten. It's kind of fun, that classic Arbok. You could get the Arbok from the uh, from the Jesse uh, pre-built deck. Oh, and by the way, somebody asked me what my very first Pokemon cards that I bought were, and I couldn't remember. And I thought that it was the Jesse deck that I got from my dad for breaking the house. Later on, I had a memory come back to me. It was not actually the Jesse deck. My very earliest Pokemon cards was the base set starter deck, the one that gave you the first edition Machamp. That was my very first Pokemon cards. So I, just like everyone else, I had that first edition Hollow Machamp and the starter, or the starter deck. Okay, so that was my very first Pokemons. Okay, now he wants a no sub on the Charizard. Here we are. Tier 1, no sub. Arbok is Cobra backwards? That's right. And Muck is come backwards. Wow. The more you know, guys. Here we go. Sweet. Reach back here. <laughs> Pokemon quality has gone down because they can't find... Oh. You know, these comments are flying by. I don't get to read them all, all the way, especially the big ones. There we are. I'm going to write this down for Mr. Kevin. I'm sorry, for Mr. Alexander Hewitt. There we go. And we'll write, oops, C1. Sweet. Sweet. Mr. Alexander. Next up, we got... Alexander Hewitt. He says, 10 chilling rain and a live custom. All right, so this is for Alexander Hewitt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we got your eight chilling rain. Wow, Alexander, you're going deep tonight, man. Here's your live custom. J. 
just Haxorus this time in the live customs. <laughs> All right. Sleep. Sleep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got our eight packs. Very good. Mr. Alexander Hewitt. Let's see what you pull. Here's Celio. Here's a Tauros. Here's Stene Rillaboom. Stene Rillaboom. It should be 10 in the custom. Oh, okay, Squovit. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know how I got stuck on 8. You're right. Here's Blaziken VMAX. All right, we've got a Blaziken VMAX. Rugged Helmet and Galarian Moltres. Okay. There's Galarian Moltres. Oh, there we go. Rainbow Caitlin. Excellent. So there's a hit. And Rock Rough. So you're doing much better in the chilling rain. I am girl. Elon, shut the... <laughs> Cheese says, I'm a girl. Who's going to buy me cards? Okay, two more packs. Here we are. Sneep. Two more packs for our friend Alexander. Quillfish. And Gardevoir Tornadus. Ooh. Gardevoir Tornadus. WTF, where's my waifu, says Cheese. Cheese, everyone pulls waifus, except for you. What is up with that, Cheese? It just isn't right. Can we get an F in chat for Cheese? Everyone is pulling waifus all over the place, except for Cheese. Alexander Hewitt, your back is now up top. Jonas Rosado says, five Japanese team up. I have a bag. You got it, Mr. Jonas. Mr. Jonas Rosado. One, two, three, four, five. Mr. Jonas. So you think you're a track star, huh? Is random cards very rare? What? 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 Here we go. We've got... Oh... We got Pikachu Zekrom. Very nice. This is why this set is so awesome. So you can pull cards like this. Pikachu Zekrom. Next pack is cold. Pack after that is also cold. The pack after that contains, hey, Snorlax and Eevee. All right. That was a good round of five. Last pack. Cold. Okay. And that's for our friend Jonas Rosado. Jonas, Jonas with the J. <laughs> Jonathan Westfall, John Corbin, Jonathan Todd, Joshua. So you say you have a bag, huh? Let's impeach the mods. <laughs> what do you? What is their impeachable offense? We'll put them on trial. <laughs> Here we are, Jonas Rosado. Welcome back, Jonas. Here we are. Being very moddy. That sounds pretty offensive. David Dillon says, good morning from the UK. Two towering perfection and two blue sky stream. First time ordering. Thank you. Hello, David. Mr. David Dillon from the UK. Oi. Did I do that right? Oi, he's got mental illness. It's Tuesday, isn't it? There we go. I'm British. <laughs> Sneep. He's got mental illness. Oh, pack number one is going to give you Dragonite. Do you like this new Dragonite card? He looks pretty punchy. It's always yours making problems. We are bad 
Shit crazy. We are loose bullets. Really? Europe's always causing trouble? You mean like over time historically or like recently? And a cold one. Okay, so four cold packs and one Dragonite. That's going to be for our new friend, Mr. David Dillon, who made his first order today. Here we are. Do 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 do. Do 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 David Dolan. Caitlin's here. Oh my, thank you for letting me know. Oh, Caitlin, how are you tonight, Caitlin? How's your tummy? Next up we got Ruben Aguilar, four McDonald's, one Sky Stream, and one Lost Thunder. Okay. One Sky Stream. One Lost Thunder. And four McDonald's. Oh, my. Here we are. France, Greece, and other places are mass protesting against the government. We're fighting each other about racism and pronouns. Fight, fight, fight. Do you guys feel like France should be the ancestral home of the French? Or do you guys think that France should be sort of like an open sort of like one world globalist country where anyone can move into no matter who they are or what they have you know whether they have a job or not how do you guys think that france should be maybe like given out you know what i mean here we are sleep i'm flinch oui oui all countries has blood on our hands. Nobody's a saint. Who runs the world? The people with money. I don't care what. All right. We've got Rowlet. Look at this cute little Rowlet. Hoot hoot. Is it possible to keep an order unsneaped? Yeah, you would just tell me that you would like your order to remain sealed. Okay. Oh, we, we, we got crookie. Is anyone in here watching? Is anyone French? Quick, he's asking logical questions. Get him. Here's crookie. <laughs> so this isn't a place where he destroys cards. Well, you can buy cards with the intention of having them cut, but you know, you'll be cutting your own cards at that point. Americans killed the Native Americans here and took over America. That's true, actually. America, uh, the, the Europeans... The European immigrants that sort of founded and, and settled America uh, kept pushing the Indians back, and there were all kinds of war over the land, and the Europeans ended up winning. Here's your Lost Thunder. Oh, man, the perfect Lost Thunder, dude. You pulled a secret rare out of your Lost Thunder. Extremely lucky. Odds of about 1 in 30 of that occurring. Okay, there we are. Remember, the reason that we call the Native Americans Indians is because the uh, the settlers thought that they were going, they were looking for India for the spice trade, and they ran into America. They ran into the United States before it was the United States. So that's what happened. Okay, so this goes to Mr. Rubin. So they started calling the Native Americans Indians. Mr. Rubin. And then France and Britain, they started having all kinds of wars over here. The French-Indian War. And then the uh, American, the, the early, the forefathers were like, wait a second, we don't want to be ruled by King George. He's way over there. And so they had the Boston Tea Party where they threw all the... And remember, part of it was they didn't want to pay even a little more taxes. They were like, hell no, no more taxes. So the, the original founding fathers were pissed because they had to pay more taxes and, you know, everyone's like, well, it was it was because they didn't get equal representation. Well, you know, I suppose you wouldn't care about getting that representation if you didn't care about taxes. You'd be like, oh, I don't care about those taxes, a little extra money, who cares? No, they were like, fuck that, you know what I mean? And then they, they went around killing other British people in order to get control of the country. It's really fascinating if you think about it. West says, now we pay hella taxes. Yeah, I know. It's actually really crazy when you think, it, think about it. When you think about it, it's crazy. You got a lot of Americans today that are, are kind of like 
I don't know. They're just like the opposite of what the founding fathers were. You got a lot of Americans today like leaping at the opportunity to pay more taxes. Well, and the funny thing is they're not leaping for themselves to pay more taxes. Uh, you know, they could always just donate their money to charity if they just wanted to give more of their own money away. The concept of taxing more is to tax other people more. It's sort of a way of legal taking things from other people. That's what it's all about. You go, you know, I really think so-and-so should have to pay more taxes. Not me. It won't really affect me because I'll be the benefactor of that. You know what I mean? So we're all very good at that. We're all very good at saying, you know what I should get for, for free? Stuff. I should get that stuff for free. Uh, and it's never really free because it's always paid for by somebody. All right. Having a sip of my energy drink. No matchless fighters? We're sold out of matchless fighters. They tax the people to keep us in line. That's right. Get in line, stupid people. Sheep. <laughs> but billionaires pay on average less than the middle class. Now, I've heard that argument many times, right? Let's do a little, let's do a little math. Billionaires pay less than the middle class. Let's say you're in the middle class and you earn $60,000. And you pay, um, let's say in the middle class, you're paying, what would it be, like 18% or something like that? I don't know the amount. Now, let's say uh, you're a billionaire and you made $1 billion this year because you're such a great billionaire. And you pay 5%. Okay, so this seems super unfair that you're paying 5%. Now, this is just a topic of rates. It's not a tip. It's not a topic of whether or not having a lot of money is moral yet, but we can talk about that too. So let's see what 5% of a billion is. So that's a million. I think that's a billion. Okay. I think I did that right. So the billionaire ends up paying this much. And correct me if I'm wrong, mathematicians. Okay, so the billionaire pays that much money. Oops. <laughs> and you end up paying this much money in the middle class. So you pay out a whopping $10,800. So here's the difference. It turns out the billionaire paying 5%, he's super important for society. This doesn't look right. Does this look right? Oh, that was loud. I don't think this number is right, is it? That would be 50 million. No, that, that's correct. That is correct, right? So the billionaire pays about $50 million and you pay about $10,000. So... One five percent of one billion is fifty million. Yeah. So the billionaire who earned a billion this year, and he only pays five percent, he ends up being worth fifty million dollars in taxes, and you are worth about ten thousand dollars in taxes. So while Bernie Sanders is out here complaining about what billionaires pay, uh, billionaires are actually way more important than you are, you and I are in in a, a sort of financial sense. And so you can hate on them all you want, but they're paying for everything, okay? So you're not paying for very much over here. They're, they're pretty much already paying for everything. Uh, a, another question might be whether or not having a lot of money is moral. So that's a different question. Did you just assume my life is only worth 10K? Tyler says, except they aren't paying. No, that's not true. They do pay, actually. That's a, that's a common, um, you know, that's a false statement. Uh, the the uh, fact checkers have determined that this is false. <laughs> Isn't that what they say? The fact checkers have determined. Mr. Most billionaires pay no taxes. Hmm. That's interesting. So let's see. Okay. Che Jeff Bezos, chief executive of Amazon and the owner of the Washington Post, paid $973 million in taxes. Okay, so there you go. So you're wrong. 
Actually, Jeff Bezos pays so much more taxes that you almost couldn't even imagine how much taxes he has paid out in one year. You can work your whole life and not, not even pay as much taxes as he has paid in a month. So he's worth more than your entire life's worth of tax, taxation in like a month. So you can keep crying about how billionaires don't pay taxes. I, I don't love the billionaire, billionaires either. I'm not like simping for billionaires. But I'm just saying, when you claim that billionaires pay no taxes, that is just a false statement. It's just a false statement, and you guys need to stop saying it. You got to tell the truth. Okay, so back to the list. They do actually pay taxes. That is the truth. So, let's see. Let's see. We've got... Who did we just open for? I'm all distracted. I know we did David Dolan. And then... Yes, we opened for Ruben Aguilar. And now we have Mr. Jeff Leon, who needs three chilling rain. We got one, two. Let's go get a third one. All right. The misconception is that people see billionaire and think cash, well, most of it is unrealized equity. So the question is more, is it ethical that Bezos gained 99 billion in wealth and only paid 1 billion? Yeah, that's a good question. We can ask, that's, that's what I was talking about. One of the questions I was asking is, should anyone be allowed to have that much money, you know? Because people get upset with the idea that somebody could have so much money. But also, let me point this out. So, I want to show you guys a really another really fascinating number. I think you guys will really enjoy this. How many people does Amazon employ? How many people does Amazon employ? 798,000 employees. 798,000 employees. Wow. Imagine if Jeff Bezos didn't have Amazon. There were just, all those jobs would be gone. So people don't understand that. They don't understand why capitalism works so well. Yeah, Jeff Bezos, he gets really rich, but so do a lot of the people working for Amazon. You know, you got lots of executives, Lots of people who are engineers, software engineers, you got all kinds of jobs for management. You know, and yeah, there's the jobs at the bottom too, the jobs like lift box from point A to point B. All right, sweet. But you're, you're, the point of life is to start out with that job and move up. So here we are, Jeff, Jeff Leon. Here's Go Lurk. 798,000. Pretty close to a million people rely on Amazon for a job. I heard Mr. is a millionaire. What? I'm a pokey gazillionaire. So, Jeff Leon, I'm afraid that's a cold pack. I don't need the hollows. Oh, Jeff, you're my hero. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff, I'm sorry that the, those packs were cold. Now we have Ray Penna, Six Hidden Fates. All right, Ray, you'll have to give me a minute. Here we are. Yeah, and we'll go ahead and snip this. Topic, guys. <clears throat> Bezos still can't pay their employees twenty dollars. Well, you know, when I got my job at Target, where I worked for nine dollars an hour, the minimum wage back then was just seven fifty, I believe, where I lived. Twenty dollars an hour. It's a lot of money, man. I. It just sounds a lot like. It doesn't really matter what I say. You guys are determined to hate Amazon and hate Jeff Bezos. 
But so let me say this. So where'd I put that little piece of paper? Just had it. So how about this? Hate Jeff Bezos. Hate Jeff Bezos. So there's actually a simple solution. Stop using Amazon. So there you go. Stop doing business with them. Stop doing business. Stop buying Amazon products. Just stop it. And you guys never do. You know why? Because you guys are greedy too. You're like, I'm going to shop on Amazon because it's fast, it's easy, and it, it is cheap. So you guys, you know, you shop around with your money to try and get a price that you like and a product that you like. Well, if you're so mad at Jeff Bezos, you're just so exceptionally mad at him and he's so evil, stop buying his products. Stop buying his products. And then that's it. He wouldn't exist anymore. He wouldn't be a thing. And the funny thing is, once Jeff Bezos is gone, it would be some other guy would be the richest guy in the world. And you'd hate him too, you know what I mean? You'd hate him. Did you cut a prison retail earlier? Prison retail. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So if you hate him, stop shopping at Amazon. Here we go. Mister, I hate Jeff so much, I got Amazon Prime. <laughs> Don't sneak the Charizard, mister. <laughs> Reminds me of the Walmart episode of South Park. I was getting pizza, so I missed it. Unfortunately, you didn't get any super rare cards in it, okay? So the funny thing is, let's say, um, let's say we ate Jeff Bezos. So let's say we, we ate the rich. Jeff Bezos was eaten. It would just be the next guy. You know, you would just have the next wealthiest guy. So let's look at the wealthiest guys. Okay. Top 10 richest people in the world. So Jeff Bezos is the wealthiest man in the world with $117 billion. So JB, he's got $117 billion with a B. The second wealthiest guy would be Elon Musk. So we've got Elon Musk. All right. And he has $151 billion. All right. So let's say we, we straight up guillotine this guy. He's dead now. We killed him. You just, there, now there's a different richest man. And, and it sort of actually gets to this point. There's always a richest man. There's always a richest man. And the truth is, if you could just wealth redistribute it to the point where we're all pretty much not even close to being like millionaires or billionaires, whatever... At that point, we would look a whole lot like North Korea or Cuba or one of those other shitty places to live where all of your smartest, genius innovators don't want to live. Guys like Elon Musk, they would say, I shouldn't be living here. I should be living in some place like America where I can be paid for my ideas and I can grow and you know create a huge organization, huge profitable organization. So all your smartest people will leave and all your dumb people crying about, oh, this guy's got more money than me. They'll be stuck there with no money, and eventually some tyrant will take over. Because that's, that's essentially, eventually that happens. So there will always be a richest guy. All right. What you guys really are, you know, what you really should think about is, should there be a cap on how wealthy anybody should be? And the moment you place that cap on how wealthy a person can be, what would stop somebody like Jeff Bezos from just leaving? You know what I mean? They're like, I'm out of here. All right, sneep. And sneep. There we go. There will always be a wealthiest guy. 
no matter what you try. So this is for Ray Penna. Ray Penna, we have your six hidden fates. That's a big order for Ray Penna. Yeah, you know, you can keep eating the rich and then one day you'll find out that the richest guy in the world doesn't live in your country anymore. He'll live in a different country and that will be the country that does all of the innovating and does all of the rocket and science and space exploration and develops the greatest websites in the world like Amazon and Facebook and Microsoft. It won't be your country. It'll be somebody else's country because you were so mad. You were so horribly mad that somebody else has more money than you. You just couldn't take it. And uh, so it's a terrible mindset, in my opinion. What do we have here? We have Charmeleon. Oh, man, that's that's a rough round so far. far. Let's see the last pack. Ah, Blaine's Last Stand and Zapdos. I apologize. That is a rough round of Hidden Fates, Mr. Ray Penna. You got Noibat and Raichu. Let me toss you a bonus card to help you out. Give me a second. Here we go. So we had a Charizard come off of one of those tins. That'll help you a little bit. Ray Penna. And, you know, the way I see it, I want Jeff Bezos in my country. I want Elon Musk in my country. You know, I want they're, they're not going to just decide, yeah, well, I'm not going to work hard. I'm not going to innovate. I'm not going to build. I'm not going to create a court. They're not going to be like that. The men like that aren't like that. They wake up in the morning and all they think about is building. You know what I mean? That's all they think about. So they're going to succeed somewhere and you can chase them away or behead them or whatever it is you're going to do. And they're gonna say, bye, I don't wanna live with you anymore. And they're gonna go live somewhere nice, you know? They're gonna they're gonna find a better place to live and then you're gonna be by yourself. But at least you won't have anyone rich near you, you know what I mean? Bye. So next up we have Damon Sims. He says, seven blue sky streams. You got it, Damon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. College is not worth it. Way overpriced. Maybe community college. I agree with that statement. College is really overpriced these days, guys. Mister, don't you agree that there's more to life than money? You all seem very finance orientated. Well, that's because we were talking about a finance related subject. And you're right. I think that there is more to life. I think the main thing in life is to have, uh, you know, have a happy relationship with a partner who loves you and have some kids and grow old and pass away. Uh, but we were talking about a financial subject, so that's why it was so financial. Here we are. Here we go. So this is for Damon Sims. Ooh, cold. Cold. Have your partner, have your, you know, have your side chicks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> cold. Oh, look at this. We've got a Medicam. How nice. Find a partner who loves you. Have your wild swinger party parties. Cold. And cold. Whew. That is also a cold round. So Mr. Damon Sims. Damon Sims. Mr. I love swinging. On the swing set, right? He meant on the swing set, guys. Damian Dolan, Donovan Peacock, Daniel Ortiz, Dustin Carpio. You must be up top, Damon. Host, you know, find a partner who loves you and your crazy sex life and uh, host your masquerade parties where there's no rules. You know, just regular things. There's more to life. There we go, Damon Sims. West Donini. West says, pre-grade the full arts, Lugia break, and the notable hollows, if any. And a little tip for you. Wes, you're too kind, mister. Thank you so much. Okay, you've got a big bag. So let's get it going. Notable hollows, huh? All right, we got this big chunk of 
hollows over there. Yellow shuckle. <laughs> Just getting your hollows moved off to the side because you got a lot of them. Mr. West, did you want all these hollows? Carnivine. You can throw the reverses while you're at it. I think he's saying you can throw away the reverses while you're at it. Is that what you mean by that? Have you pulled ghost case? Oh, wow, what a nice ghost case. Xerneas, Rhyhorn, Electric. Here we are. All right. Sleeping with the Pikachu, sleeping with the Machamp. What? So here we are. You got a pretty big pile, and we're not going to grade absolutely everything, just the ones that I think that are going to uh, pull hot. So here we go. We've got Xerneas. Did I say pull hot? I mean, be a hot card to grade. Xerneas is looking pretty good, actually, but he's got white dot on the back edge. How about this one? Yeah, he's got the same problem. This is Genesect, I think, from base set. He's looking pretty nice. That is a simple V card, so I don't think you'll actually grade that V card. Same with this Urshifu. Tapu Koku, Tapu Koko Full Art. Looking pretty nice. Jeff Bezos is jacked. I think he would beat me up. Yeah, <laughs> very interesting. My shadow. Now, now wait a second. He's, did he say to get rid of the uh, reverse hollows? I don't even remember. Here. Don't worry, stay on his lazy eye side. <laughs> what? Here's Rapid Strike Urshifu. And he's, his corner down here is definitely thinner than the other corner. Yes, so he's probably a nine. Tapu, I don't think you'll grade these Tapus or these Vs. Let's take a close look at this Regirock, though. Now, Regirock's got a little whiting on the edge. He's a 9. Carbink. Carbink is surprisingly good. <laughs> Throw the verses away. Then on the bottom. He's got a little bit of a white edge down here. I'm going to put him in the nine pile. Reverse hollow Snorlax, actually. Has a white dot. What a bummer. Tapu Smoopu. I don't think you'll grade Tapu. Uh, you know, I don't think you'll grade Tyranitar. This Urshifu is clearly thin on the left. This Umbreon looks fantastic, but it's thin on the bottom. Thin on the bottom. Here's Bronzong. Thin on the right. Necrozma Tapu. I don't think you'll grade these. Glaceon. That is thin on the left. Rapid Strike Urshifu. He looks pretty clean, so he might have a shot at a 10. He would just fire all his seven, 799,000 workers. Tyranitar, Flapple. All right, that's got a wide edge as well. Then on the bottom, he might have a little shot at a 10, the Snorlax Reverse Hollow. Yeah, this looks kind of clean, too. Altaria. Altaria's kind of thin on the bottom. Might have a small shot at PSA. Let me look. This has a small shot at PSA, not at CGC. Yeah, this might have a shot, too, at PSA. Same here, just a little off center, but it has a shot. Okay, I'll to know. These two are fine. Now this one is definitely thin on the left. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. That looks pretty clean. Your Del Fox looks like it's got a shot. Bronzong's a bit thin on the top. Alteria. Kingdra. Kingdra, I think, has a shot. Hollow Mew, huh?
Yeah, your hollow muse might have a shot. That's pretty big. Here's your Altaria again. This corner is just a bit too small, in my opinion. I think he's a little too thin on the left. <laughs> All right. That's probably your best card in the bag, and that looks like it's got a shot. Okay, good. So, and now you got a bunch of reverse hollows. Let me just make sure none of these are actually pretty good. I think that comes from a special pack. Here's a Nido Queen. I mean, Restaurant's pretty nice. We're just going to pull the really nice ones out if you don't mind. Here's Electric. A lot of these are junk. Obviously, Shuckle needs to stay. All right, so you couldn't live without Shuckle. I know you, Wes. So there's your reverse hollow shuckle. Okay, this is pile three, which is cards I don't think you'll grade. This is pile number two. These are mostly like what I consider nines. You got a lot of full arts in here from your recent uh, activity with the Fates Collide, including, oh man, you got a lot actually. So you got, you've got Glaceons, Two Glaceons. I think you have two Altarius, don't you? Oh, man, you even got this Urshifu here. So Altaria, Glaceon, Glaceon, Umbreon, Urshifu, and Urshifu. Are those gradable? I think they could be, sure. You'd end up with a nine, but it could be uh, pretty close to break even at that point. Now, I think the Lugia is worth it. Would I send the Muse? I probably would. The Delphox as well looked very clean. I think Delphox has a good chance. I would definitely send out Mega Alakazam. This Altaria has a good shot at a 9. Yeah, the Altaria's got to be placed in a 9. I think it's too close on the Altaria to claim that it could have a shot at the 10. So I apologize for that. And this Urshifu looks pretty clean as well. And a Tapu Koko looks pretty clean. So here we go. Yeah, you got some nice pulls in here. All right, there you go, Mr. Wes. And thank you for donating those hollows. Makes your bags way easier to handle. Yeah, fat bag, man. Wes, if you don't have the Pokey Ritual in the Discord, let me know. I'll give it to you. Samuel Rocho says, 16 Fates Collide, 2 Darkness Ablaze, and 2 Unbroken Bonds with live shipping. Wow, Sam Rocho going deep again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We got 13 packs here. 14, 15, 16 with one last pack. There's one last pack if you'd like it, Samuel. I'm gonna go mark the Face Collide as sold out. Okay, Face Collide, sold out. Now, the other parts of his order included two darkness and two unbroken bonds. Okay, two darkness, huh? One darkness, two darkness. Can I have the Pokey Ritual? Says Big Mac. Uh. I don't think you could actually, Mr. Big Mac. Okay, and uh, where can I put this for now? I'll put this up top. Two darkness, two unbroken bond, and the unbroken bonds. Where are those? Here they are. Here they are. This is for Mr. Samuel Orojo. Mr. Sam, Mr. Sam, I am. Am I pokey rich yet or just pokey poor? 4 a.m. pain. Yeah, we're up late, guys. Mr., there's a diglet in my shorts. <laughs> there's a diglet in my shorts. <laughs> Put that over there. What do we got with our darkness ablaze? Here's a Vibrava. And Familiar Bell. Here's Red's Challenge. And Janine. Ooh. Red's Challenge Janine. Police Skidrow. What? Ow. All right. So how about these packs over here? Ooh. Sleep. One, two. Oops. 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. All right. This is for Mr. Samuel Orojo. Mr. Sam. Here's Cottony. Anybody cut some packs with those new fancy scissors? They sure have. All right. Here's another one of those fantastic holographic muse. Here's Umbreon EX. That's a great pull, the Umbreon. Umbreon EX arrives. I really like that artwork. It looks really nice. Is it heartwarming at times when we hear stories of people selling Pokey cards to tide them through tough times? Oh, I would actually... I, I don't know if heartwarming warming is the term I'd use. It's actually sad to think somebody would have to lose their cards in order to make it through a tough time. You know what I mean? Here's Fennekin. And here's Mr. Mime. And Whimsicott Lucario. Here's Reverse Hollow Mew. <laughs> Maybe you could grade them together, the Hollow and the Reverse Hollow. Here's Howlucha. Is Howlucha. Helix Fossil Ammonite. Roy Nicholas and Deonce EX. No full art so far. Solosis. Rotom and Mega Audino. Here's a Mothim. Duosion. And finally, last pack, Fairy Garden. There were no more full arts in the entire box. Wow. Still a lot of EX hits came out of there. So your pull rate kind of makes sense. You, it shows you how rare a full art is, everyone. What's the chase card, Alakazam? That's right. Secret print Alakazam was the chase, and he did pull it earlier. So let's see what he did pull. So you pull Deonce Mega Audino and Umbreon. You also pull an Amistar Break and these two Mews. So that's for Mr. Samuel Orocho. He wants some live shipping. You got it, Sam. Sam, you got a fantastic pull, didn't you? You know, Sam, maybe one of the reasons why you didn't find a full art is because you took so goddamn many. Take a look at that. His first round, he pulled four of these. Four full arts in his first round. Like, pfft, Jesus. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm going to take all these and put them back here. And then we'll put these in the front. Yeah, you did extremely good on your first round. Second round wasn't as hot, but that's okay. Appreciate you opening those, testing them out. That's a heavy bag, Mr. Sam. Now he would like live shipping. <laughs> Let's get that live shipping label. There we are, print label. Print. Is this live? Sam, I got your bag. You're ready to ship out, Sam. This is a pre-recording. It was recorded two weeks ago. Okay, next up we have Raging Spirit Gaming. Can I get 15 more Jet Black Spirit? You sure can for Raging Spirit Gaming. 18 to 15 more packs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got eight packs here. Oof. You record Mr. Toes. All right. Not gonna lie, I was trying to catch Alakazam yesterday. What?
What do you do with all those basic cards? Give them to you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There we go. This is for our good friend, Raging Spirit Gaming. Good luck. Which Beanie Babies do you have for sale? <laughs> I got the Princess Diana Special Edition Beanie Baby. And I'm only asking, I'm only asking $15,000. Now you can see that this pack here wasn't properly open. <laughs> All right, here we go. One. Two, you got Blissey. Look at this Blissey. She gonna give you a smack. One. Cold. Here's Celebi. Ooh, Celebi. Do you know Meek Mill? I know um, Pokemon. Oh, that's, that's right. We have one pack that needs to be completely open. There we go. It's cold. Cold. Greedin. Look at that Greedin. He's so nice. Here's Zorora. Look at this Zorora. Okay, there's the Aurora. Weavile. Cold. Cold. Here's Gengar. Look at the Gengar. Rillaboom. Cold. And... Oof. No secret rare. You get some nice V cards. No full arts either, actually. There we go. How nice. How nice. That's for Raging Spirit Gaming. Raging Spirit Gaming. He is probably up here. Here we are. He says, oh, well, it's a gamble. <laughs> yeah, I know. With with 15 packs, what you're thinking is you're giving yourself a 50% er, chance to pull the hot one, right? Shane Childers says, money for that 11th Roaring Sky pack. Oh, man, Shane. Sorry that that didn't turn into anything. OSM says, nah, man, let's try for some more snipes. Two more team-ups and two Crimson Invasions. Ah, yes, Crimson Invasion is back on the menu, everyone. Okay, there's Crimson. And one Chilling Rain. Okay, one Chilling Rain. He also wants two team-ups. You got it? Two team-ups. I like the lava cake at Chili's. Ugh. <laughs> Sneep. Here's Chilling Rain. Gyarados incoming. Easy Gyarados, guys. The Gyarados in Crimson Invasion just looks so good. He really does. So, what do we got here? In pack number one, it's Regirock. And pack number two, it's Corefish. And then in pack number three, you pull Bonnet. Nothing too wild in those. How about these team-ups? You've got Drago Knight. Oh, man, it's probably a cold pack right after it. Woo! That was a tough round, OSM. Oh, mister. OSM. Sorry about that. No crazy snipes. How much Jet Black do you have left? I have one sealed box. Just one. I also have a, I also have a bit of an open box, the one you were just now pulling out of. Gregory Powers says, two tower perfection, I have a bag. Okay, this is for Gregory Powers. Gregory Powers, it's your turn. Mr. Gregory. Damn, mister, you gotta do a big restock. 
you know, I won't be restocking some of the Japanese sets at all. So once Jet Black Spirit and Silver Lance are gone, they're gone. Matchless Fighters might get restocked. I might have already put in an order for it. Matchless Fighters is a really nice set because it focuses on Golden Snorlax and Galarian Moltres. So I like those a lot. And so that Japanese set might be here to stay because of that. But the other two sets won't be here to stay. My snom is so small. <laughs> Here we are, Gregory Powers. Oh, Gregory. What do you think about CGC slabs? Are they good? I really, really enjoy the CGC slab. The slab itself is very nice. Now we have Alex PSX who says, cut an NBA Prism Retail. Alex, we're cutting the NBA Prism Retail. So that brings the total that this has cut from 45 to about 60, uh, 66. So now it's at 66. What do you think about the new Ace grading? Um, I don't really have too many thoughts on it. There's a whole lot of grading companies starting up. They're all gonna advertise that they're the best and I don't really believe it. The best is gonna be probably in terms of value, it's going to be PSA and Beckett. And uh, CGC as well is a top three for me. And I don't really care for any other company, maybe except for my own. But there's just a ton of companies. There's a ton of them. And, you know, if you feel like a company is pretty good at, at deciding a card is a proper 10, then you should grade with them, you know. Look at this. The thing about PSA is it's, they know that they've got the best pull or the best company right now, and they're going to overcharge for what they uh, do. Anthony Edwards. Joe Morant. You cut Joe Morant. What are you doing, Alex? Ah, oh, man. Alex. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of grading companies popping up. Anthony Ravy. He says... How's it going? Five battle styles. It's because everyone's got dollar signs in their eyes, I'm sure. And PSA, their prices are just so wildly too high because they have no good competition. Maybe over time, we'll figure out that we like some grading companies more than others, right? But we haven't reached that point yet. Okay, so Anthony Ravy wants five battle styles. I think you're the first battle styles order of the night. One, two, three, four, and five. There we go. Two chilling rain. Okay, chilling rain. Doot. Three NFL prism. Okay, NFL prism. Here we are. One, two, three. Can you show my two bags at the street at of the stream, please? Thank you, uh, Anthony Ravy. I know you've got like a. Let's see. So Anthony Ravy wants to see his bags. He says he has two of them. I don't remember if you actually have two or if we combine them, okay? But when it's time to ship, if you say that you have two, I'll go looking for two, okay? So here's an Anthony Ravy. Oh, yeah, and it does say bag number two on it. Let's look for a bag number one for Anthony Ravy. Here we go. So we have a really, really large Anthony Ravy bag here. Anthony, you need to ship out, actually. Is it okay if I just start shipping you out, Anthony? You've got too much stuff over here. Okay, that's Anthony Ravy. So there's point in having your cards over when you have this many because you don't actually save any money on shipping at this point. Let's get you cut up. You ready? Time to ship. That's right. Anthony Ravy's been going deep. He's going deep right now. PSA too lenient with their 10s. Win from the C Tyranitar to Beckett for the black label. Sneak. Win from the C. Here we go. All right. So this is for Anthony Ravy. Anthony, you've got Keenan, Chase, Daryl, Travis, and Rondale Moore, rookie. All right. But you know what? I didn't see any Crusaders in there, did you? I didn't see 
even one crew. I'm sorry, I didn't see an orange crusader. How about pack number two? So we got DK Met Metcalf, Adam Thielen, Eamon Raw St. Brown, All Americans Hamilcar, and Trevor Lawrence rookie. All right, there's that Trevor Lawrence rookie. But you know, it's not the Trevor Lawrence Crusader rookie. You want Orange Crusader rookie, I believe. Last pack is Matthew Stafford, Stephen Diggs, All American Dylan Moses, Hamilcar, and Elijah Mitchell. Hmm. Okay, so I think these are probably a little on the cold side, these three packs. Oops. And you're going to keep all of them. I'm not going to bulk any of them off. There we go, but I'm putting them back in their prism sleeves. Now, let's open up these battle styles. So we got Hound Doom. Here's Esper Aegis Slash. Sandaconda. Karina's Focus. And Cheryl. Oof. So the battle styles were really cold. Old Cemetery and Tornadoes coming out of Chilling Rain. There we go. Tornadoes and Tapu Fini Melanie. So, that was a very cold round, Mr. Anthony Ravy. And Mr. Anthony, I'd like to start getting these shipped out. He signed a deal with them for his box breaks. That's why they agreed to do the Logan Paul. What? Orange Crusader Lawrence is probably the chase for the NFL Prisms. Here we are. There we go. Now, let's see if we can print some labels up for Anthony. Have we shipped Anthony Ravy before? Oh. I don't know if we've shipped Anthony Raby before. So, Mr. Anthony, I'd really like to ship you for the first time. Oh, you're an international shipment. I see now. Okay. And let me just see if we've ever shipped you at all, Bill. Oh, that's history. Hold on. Huge event in Miami. You think that's a good idea? This is Joe Quinn. What's up, man? How's it going? It's Mr. Joe Quinn. It looks like we've never shipped you at all, Mr. Anthony Ravy. So, Mr. Anthony Ravy, I'd love to get you shipped out for the first time. I think that would be a really good idea. If you don't mind, contact me on Discord and get me your phone number. I got to have your phone number. But also, uh, you know, so Anthony Ravy, uh, you got a lot of cards here. They're pretty heavy. You're going to need to pay a total of $28 for shipping for these, okay? So, Anthony Ravy, to get those shipped is $28. Just letting you know, okay? So, Anthony Ravy is done. Let's go refresh the stream. Do you have a Crystal Lugia? Any grade? I do not have any Crystal Lugias, unfortunately. I thought about getting one. Mr. What is your favorite slab look from the biggest companies? What? I don't know what you mean by that. Vegetables are a knockoff of fruit. Yeah, that's right. And they're not even as good. So, where were we? Do, 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 do. Here it is. Now we move up to Michael Cusick. Michael's got a really large order. He wants five cosmic and ten more chilling. Okay, five cosmic, ten chilling. That's a really large order from Michael Cusick. One, two, three, four, five... Oops. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Nine, ten. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. All right. And then, oh, and then five of these, right? So here we go. Sleep. Almost done with my 7 7 work shift. What? 7 11. Good luck to Michael Cusick. He pulls Duskull. 
Here's Helioptile. Sylveon. Hey, that's a pretty good reverse hollow. Here's Ambipalm. Mm -hmm. And the babies. You did it. Man, you went so deep just to pull a babies. Man, Cosmic has really gotten expensive, guys. Cosmic is a pricey set. I love tacos. That's why I have such a nice microwave. <laughs> All right, how about this chilling rain? How about this chilling rain? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. This music's so good. Lapras. Mm -hmm. I think there's a different version of it, though. Diglett. Mm. Here's Hatram. Passimian Beedrill. Ooh. Expedition Uniform. Score Bunny. Oh, man, these have been really cold so far. Lady Ba. Golurk Cinderace. Oh my lord. And Galade. Did you guys see that? So that's straight out of the box uh, in order too. You want to see? Came from right there. Wow. Ten cold packs in a row. And it wasn't really like the Cosmic was super hot anyways. I mean, he did pull a GX within five packs. That's just really tough, man. So that's for Michael Cusick. Michael, let's get you some spare cards. We'll get you a Venusaur, Talonflame, and Machamp. Wow, those are some nice cards from Tammy Lowe. Thank you, Tammy. And Mr. Michael, thank you for donating those hollows. Mm. After Michael Cusick, we have Shane Childers, who says... I'd like five packs of Chilling Rain. Oh, Michael. I mean, uh, oh, Shane. I think your timing is pretty lucky here. I suspect there has to be a hit coming up soon because 10 cold packs just came out of the box. Two. Three. Four. And five. All right. So that is for our good friend, Shane Childers. Let's see what he pulls. Avery, Squovet, look at that Squovet, here we are, Rugged Helmet Ultra Rare, so you do jump on the Ultra Rare, but it is an item card this time, Rugged Helmet, okay, Rugged Helmet, here's Slow King V, so you got two pulls and five packs, there we go, Slow King, and, oh, there they all are. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Michael Cusick. All the hot cards were in the next five packs. You got an Ultra Rare and an Alternative Art Tornadus. There you go, Mr. Shane Childers. Lucky night for you. Whew. Mr. Shane. Now, where's Shane's bag? Shane, you're back here, right? No, wait. We, we had to move you because your bag was so large. All right, Shane, you have some tough luck with the Roaring Skies and then some hot luck with the Chilling Rain. How's it going, mister? I got live shipping, too. Oh, my bad. Here we go. <laughs> and live shipping. Okay, give me a second. Okay, same address. Address that starts with 285. And print. Next up, we have Devin Kawamura. 
He says five Roaring Skies and one Shiny Star V. I don't know if I have any more Roaring Skies. I will go looking for it. It will take me a minute, but I, I marked it as sold out because I, I don't think I have five more, but I'm gonna go look. So, I'm climbing back here. How's it going, kitty? Kitty, let's see if I can find any Roaring Skies back here. In fact, I do. I do have more Roaring Skies. How much do I have left? Oh, I've got plenty of them. Oh, I've got a ton of them. I didn't even know. I got tons of Roaring Skies, actually. I, this whole box was mostly Roaring Skies. I didn't know it. I thought it was mostly Primal Flash. All right, let me grab all these bags. I got lots of bags and they're just full of Roaring Skies. So Roaring Skies should go back on, oops, should go back on the menu. Oops. Let's see, tons of Roaring Skies actually. Okay, now let's see, what, what exactly did they cost? I don't remember. I think I can deduce it here. So I think it's 80 divided by five. They were $16 a piece. Let me go update it again. So Roaring Skies. It's funny, if you hadn't put that order in, I would just have them as sold out still. All right. So we did have Roaring Skies, I just needed to go hunting for them. And did we grab the shiny star already? We did. So now we just need the five of these. One, two, three, four, five. I'd really love to have, I'd really love to have this guy in a 10, the Deoxys Hollow. Yeah, so cool. Ow. Man, I did it again. I keep tearing the skin away here. Oh, that hurts so bad. Sam says, I remember I have another bag or two. Sam, you're saying that you have more than one bag? You need a Pokemon Band-Aid. All this Pokemon music, man. I got a bunch of Star Wars and had some others from before, says Samuel Orocho. Sam! Alright, Sam, we'll go looking for another bag for you then. There we go. The Pokemon gods demand blood. <laughs> okay. So, good luck to Devin Kawamura. We've got Wurmple and Zekrom isn't here too. That's so cool. Okay, Wurmple, Zekrom. Oh, this is the shiny star pack. Reggie, and you pull. Not a hot pack this time, Mr. Devin. I apologize. That is a cold pack of shiny star. Now, how about the rest of this, though? We've got Unpheasant. Here's a Natu. A Pikachu. Shuppet. Oh, man, that's awesome. Rayquaza Full Art. Oh, man. Take a look at that, guys. So this is why you open up Roaring Skies right here. Rayquaza EX. Now, there's also a Mega Rayquaza in this set, too. Fantastic pull, Devin. There you go. And finally, Togetic. All right, Togetic's the last card. You know what? This is a shiny star pack, so let me go ahead and put it back here. It'll get used in the future. Doo -doo -doo. So, Devin, do you need a new bag? 
Devin doesn't say he needs a new bag, but I feel like he does. Hey, I got that Togetic, says Nick C. Danny Mark, Dennis Hammer, Dakota, Dontrell, Damon, Francisco, Donovan Peacock, Daniel Ortiz. I think he needs a new bag. Remember, guys, let me know the status of your bag when you order. Oh, here we are. Devin Kawamura. We had to put you up top already because <laughs> there's no more room. I've never Rayquaza card, sadly. Only a Rayquaza toy from McDonald's. Oh, well, you need a Rayquaza card, mister. There we go. Mr. Devin. Not so not long got back into stream, mister. My plan was, was to grade the card at some point. Also wanted to see what's in the bags. How much would it be to ship a bulk box to the Netherlands? Ooh, it would be really, really expensive, unfortunately, okay? It really would not be worth it, because bulk's not that valuable. Okay, what were we talking about? Ooh, Stabio or Rocho, right? Sam was saying that he's got a second bag, and here it is. Sam, I found your second bag, bag number two. So I'll just toss that with the first bag and see what the post office does about it. They'll be like, uh, your bag's heavy. <laughs> So, Sam, I found your second bag. Thank you for letting me know. Alexander Hewitt. Alexander says five team up. Oh, you got it, Mr. Alexander. One, two, three, four, five. Lewis says, me, 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 me. <laughs> the last time the Ray EX Full Art sold as a 10 was for $1,100. Is that right? Well, I don't know if his will grade 10. His looked a little off-center, but it would be pretty crazy if it did grade 10 then. Cold. Here's, oh, Celebi and Venusaur. So nice. All right, here we are. Cold and Gyarados. What a nice-looking Gyarados hollow. You sound tired, Mr. Family Dreaming. You? No, I'm just talking very low so that I don't wake them up, okay? Because they're above me and below me, and I can wake them up very easily. So we're talking real quiet tonight. This is the quietest stream. I can only say it so many times, but this stream is going to be me being very quiet. Mr., you're very quiet. <laughs> when they're gone, I'll go back to screaming and shouting and being crazy. Now we have Joshua Alvarez. He wants three Japanese team ups. I have a bag. You got it, Mr. Joshua. Good luck on your pulls. Let me just grab three of them. All right. The last PSA 9 sale was only 120. <clears throat> okay. Sneep. Here we go. For Joshua Alvarez. Joshua. This could be the round, Joshua. Let's see. Cold. Bill, oh, Bill, how nice. And Snorlax, not bad. All right, there we go. So we're looking for Joshua Alvarez. <laughs> Jonathan, John. Mm, okay. Next box. Jonathan, John Gamilla, Jose Ponce, Johnny. He says, I have a bag. You have a bag, huh? So he claims. Here we go, Joshua Alvarez. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. All right. Sylvester Sands says, Mr. Star Wars. Two packs of the Star Wars for Mr. Sylvester Sands. Here you go, Sylvester. Sleep one and two. Can you guys believe that these Star Wars packs are from 1993? They're very old vintage cards. Okay, we've got Luke and Yoda on a tree and Dagobah. Here's the X-Wing Fighters, the Evil Emperor, an ATST in the Ewoks. 
Here are Jawas. Uh, back here we got this. Who is this guy? Oh, these guys are from the canteen or something like that. Cantina. And then finally we have, there we go. Two more non-essential characters. <laughs> Pull Darth Maul. Okay, we're going for Darth Maul. There is a uh, full art Darth Vader to go after in this set, by the way. Full art Darth Vader is in this set. So if you want a full art Darth Vader or a sexy Leia, uh, this is a great set to be opening for those two things. Boba Fett, Leia, Luke. Luke again. And sticky cards, Han Solo and the Worm. All right, no sexy Leia's, no full arts in those two packs, Mr. Sylvester. There we go. Sylvester Sands knows about the full arts because he pulled a C-3PO and a Chewbacca, and I'm sure he would like to pull another one of those. And, and you know, so for this full art set, now, by the way, look how, look how fantastic that looks. You guys probably need to see them in person. Here, let's zoom. So here you can see there is actually fine detail on the card. Like, look at his chest. See the lines running there? Four out of six. So there's a total of... There's a total of six cards here. Look at that X-Wing fighter in the background. Total of six full art cards in these Star Wars sets. I think that's pretty freaking cool. Now we've got Augustus Bushman. He says, 10 sky streams, sir. Trying to get the alternative art tonight. All right, good luck with that. He wants 10 of them, huh? For Augustus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ask him if he wants to trade for Han. <laughs> Sneep. Sneep. So we've seen a lot of them. We've seen Darth Vader. We've seen Luke. We've seen Obi-Wan. We've seen Chewbacca. I don't think we've seen a Leia card. I suspect the one we have not seen is Leia. That's my suspicion. Because that's what makes the most sense. She was actually a big character in the, in the show. So I, I don't see why they would make one of all those other characters, but not Leia. So Leia's missing. Actually, I think R2-D2 is also missing. Here's Rayquaza VMAX. Ooh. And actually, it would make a lot of sense if it was Princess Leia and R2-D2, because she, in the very first movie, R2-D2 takes that message down for her, right? So I bet the missing card is Leia and R2-D2. All right, there's the Volcarona, looking real good. Okay, we got Reggie Hollow. Hold. Salamence. Oh, fantastic. Girdo Secret Rare, all right. And Jumpluff. Okay, Jumpluff. The sun is rising. Yeah, it's 424 for me. <laughs> it's pretty late, huh, guys? So, Augustus Bushman, I have your bag right here. How's it going, Augustus? Congratulations on your new full art Gyarados. There we go. Now we have Ruben Aguilar. One Crimson Invasion and one McDonald's. One Crimson. And one McDonald's. Where are the McDonald's? Oh, here they are. Running low on those McDonald's packs, huh? Very cool. All right. Here's Ghastly Go Goat. Charmander. Hey, Charmander is the second best pull in the McDonald's set. That's very good. That's for Mr. Ruben Aguilar. 
Ruben with an R. Ruben, you've been having a nice night. Let's be honest, Ruben. Ruben's been having the best night, the hottest night. But now, Ruben, your bag is so large. I'm gonna place your bag right here, Ruben. We're running out of room in the R box. I wonder if we can free up any room in the R box at all. Let's see. Let's do a little cleanup in the R box. Rogelio, Ryan. No, these all look good. Raul. This isn't even reverse hollow. What's up with this bag? So I think those are just like bulk cards here. These definitely shouldn't be in a bag. So Rob Ryan has a Mewtwo. There we go. So that actually makes a nice little chunk of extra room, which is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, now we've got Cheese. Cheese says, cut a Shining. All right, Cheese. Cheese wants me to cut a pack of Shining Fates. The mod's competing to see who can cut the, the nicest card. So here we go. Oh, I gotta be careful with that. They're so strong. Okay, Cheese, let's see what you actually cut now. Oh. Oh, Cheese, that's terrible. Oh my God, Cheese actually cut a good card, guys. That's the Suicune. This card never shows up, and it's the second most valuable card in the set. Cheese, you cut the second most valuable card, this Suicune. Oh, man. What have you done, Cheese? Come on. Cutting the Suicune. Jesus. The next pack of Shining Fates was going to be that Suicune, guys. <sighs> you know how many packs of Shining we open in a week and we don't find even one Suicune? He, like, he might as well be a Charizard pull at this point because he, he shows up so rarely. All right, here's Cheese. Yes, yeah, so that's the second best card in Shining Fates. I think he goes for a couple hundred dollars as a 10. Cheese. Matthew Mangiello. He says one live custom, two jet black, doing a giveaway on my YouTube. All right, so one live custom. Here we go. We've got Musharna. Musharna and two jet black. Grab that two jet light. Uh, there we go. All right. Send it to PSA. We'll still get a 10. Sneep. Sneep. There we go. Mr. Matthew. That's cold. And Metal Gross. You got Metal Gross. I have that card. Didn't know it was so valuable. Yes, if you do a little research, the Suicune is the second most expensive card in the set. I don't know if that's changed since the last time I looked. That's possible that it's changed, but I kind of doubt it. You know, it used to be Skyla, actually, but Skyla has gone down in price. Actually, she's gone down in price quite a lot. Okay, that's Matthew Mangiello. Oh, my eyes itchy. After Matthew, we have Evan Shea. Live ship, please. Get rid of the hollows. Keep what is worth grading in my bag, and I have one slab, says Evan Shea. How's it going, Evan? Well, you know, Evan, if we're live shipping you, you could keep your hollows, but let's just, you said to uh, give up some of the hollows, so let's get rid of a few of them, huh? You're funny, man. <laughs> yeah, honestly, though, it probably would reduce the weight of your bag, which would make shipping cheaper, believe it or not. It's just the whole point. So there's a Zangoose. Oh man, those are some fancy cards. Sobble. Those are some fancy cards, man. All right. Mr. Evan Shea also said he had a slab. Yeah, actually, I appreciate that. Look how many cards that was. That is actually quite heavy. Now, Evan Shea. Clicking on your name. And we'll hit print. Print! 
and we're gonna say that you have a slab. Gonna go buy me a Skyla waifu. <laughs> Skyla has a terrific personality. After Evan Shea, we have Adam Vinzen. Adam Vinzen says, can you pre-grade my bag? Particularly interested in the Galarian Ponita and the Detective Pikachu. Okay, Adam Vinzen. Let me think about where I'm gonna find your bag. I think your bag's up here. Here we are. So add, oh, let's place these over here. So Adam Vinzen. That looks great. Your Detective Pikachu is a bit thinner on the right. So this card could could maybe pull a 10 at PSA. No, he's too off-center, I'm afraid. So he is too off-centered. Your Ponita has a white dot on this edge. So neither the Pikachu nor the Ponita will grade 10. I don't think you're going to grade that. Cyber Dragon. I don't think you're going to grade these. So you said you're interested in the Detective Pikachu. Here's the Mewtwo. There's a bit of a strange corner down here. Your, your Mewtwo does have a white dot. Here's Snubble. I don't know if you care about grading Snubble. He's off center. Here's your Psyduck. Psyduck's looking pretty clean from the front. Nope, he's got a dot too, except it's a totally different corner. There, there it goes. Wow, come on, camera focus. And here is Charmander. Charmander is looking pretty thin on this edge. And he's got a dot on his own corner. Damn, dude, your entire pack of Detective Pikachu was cold. All right, here's a Cramorant. Not very interested in him. Oh, man, you got a bunch of Detective Pikachu, so hold on. So here is a Code Card Charizard. These are almost always looking like they're 10s. Tag Team Pikachu. This looks great. I don't think you'll have me grade Sun Scorch. Okay, your Blastoise looks good, too. Sticking in my finger there a little bit. So you got all these Detective Pikachu cards, and you're wanting a pre-grade on them, huh? <laughs> Like all of them? Okay, I'm gonna say thin on the bottom. Slightly tilted. It looks kind of clean. Just the ditto, mister, ha ha. All right, got it. So the ditto was a nine. Here's Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur looks fine, actually. And Morlul. I know you want to grade that Morlul. So you have another Ditto over here. That's a bit of a wide edge on that corner. And the other side has it, too. So I'd say this Ditto is a 9 as well. So both of those Dittos are 9s. You also might be interested in knowing more about this Mewtwo. Slightly thinner on the top. So maybe it's the particular packs you had. Uh, but this edge is also not that good. Yeah, so the Mewtwo is probably not. Okay, so and here are some other cards. That was... For Adam Vinzen. So these ended up actually being nines. Uh, and this is kind of tough, too. I was sad to see that. I think those are probably nines. Now, you got a few cards that look like they'd probably be tens. This Bronzong, in particular, is really nice looking. There you go, Adam. Adam. Now we got Wes Dunini. Sacrifice the last pack of Fates Collide. Ooh, but, but actually it was purchased, wasn't it? Ah, so sorry, Mr. West. I'm going to go ahead and give you a refund on that, West Donini. <laughs> the last pack of Fates Collide. 
to Papi Munano. Is that how it goes? I would sacrifice it, but we were all out. All right. So that's taken care of. Now we have Luis Rodriguez. Four towering perfection. Okay. One, two, three, four. Four blue sky. Two, three, four. One shining fates. Oh man, this would have been so wee coon in your shining fates. One vivid voltage. Okay, this is an order for Mr. Lewis Rodriguez. Good luck, Lewis. Mr. Lewis. I miss anything good? Only bad. One of the hottest pulls of the night was a Shining Fate Suicune that cheese cut in half. Because he's crazy. Poor Suicune. There we go. Mr. My Electrode exploded. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Cold. Landorus and Reggie. Nothing hot coming out of the blue sky stream. How about Towering Perfection? We've got Lycanroc V. Cheese is a madman. He's crazy. Cold. Here's... Oh, look at this. It's Duraludon. Do, do, do. Hi, Dragon. Here's the Vivid Voltage with Beedrill Zorora. Oof. That's a little cold. Now, how about this one pack of Shiny Fates? Pulling you Trap Inch and Luxray. I apologize, Mr. Lewis. This round was not too crazy of a round. Cut all the Digimons, please. Mom, he told me to cut the Digimons. Tell him to cut it out. I really like the Digimons. <laughs> Imagine being the kid that really liked Digimon and all the Pokemon kids beating up on you when you were younger. <laughs> oh, you like Digimon? You're stupid, bro. <laughs> Idiot. OSM says, five more Crimson, one live booster. If my bag is getting big, feel free to get rid of the reverse hollow, says OSM. OSM, that's a really good idea since you have uh, an international bag. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And here's your live custom. Can you block mods? Carablast. Sorry, OSM. No luck there. Just a Carablast. Sneep. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, let's see if we can get lucky in the Crimsons. We got a Hollow Gengar, actually. That's kind of cool. Okay, we got a Diggers B. Melodic. Graveler. And Counter Energy. That's a cold round too, man. <laughs> what are these cold rounds doing in our stream tonight? Only hot streams. So OSM says you can remove some of my reverse hollows to make my bag lighter. Let's take a quick look at that real fast. Like these. Keep your Dragonite with you. I think Dragonite's cool. Like Malamar. Those are old ones. These are not old ones. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. OSM. You only pick up a hollow Gengar this round. I think the Gengar is a nice hollow. He also looks well centered. Birds love Toro Tortillas. Toro Tio. 
<laughs> hey, we need to refresh now. Wow. I ate some good duck today, says Nixie. Yeah, I had some... Wait, what? <laughs> I had a good duck too. Right, kitty? Ooh, okay, so after I refresh, we have... Mr. Alexander Hewitt, who's been going real deep, he says, 10 chilling rain, T1 with subs on Caitlin's secret, and feel free to send the rest home. Sounds good, Mr. Alexander. When my order comes up, I said one box when I meant one pack. You'll be able to see the payment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Has some great chipmunk meat. Ew, chipmunk. I hear that's pretty nutty. Yeah, this is the low pop PSA 10 dark magneton. So he's, he's going for a whole bunch of money, but I don't remember how much. Is it like 4,000? Oh, it says 8.5 thousand is the current listing. It's pretty expensive. Sneep. Sneep. All right. 8.5K, says Kevin Lua. Nick C says, stop. <laughs> In the name of love. All right. Mr. Alexander Hewitt. Here's Flaffy. Zang Goose. He's a goose. Cobalion and Thwacky. Here's Urshifu. What an Urshifu. Taros. Quillfish and Zapados. Look at that lovely Zapados. I sure love Zapados. Don't you love Zapados? Stene and Rillaboom. Yeah, big boy money. Skowovet. Look at that little Skowovet. His little greedy cheeks. Inke. And... Rugged helmet, so rugged. Wouldn't you agree? That is the most rugged helmet. So that's for Alexander Hewitt. Alexander, I think you had a pretty rough round. Here's a bonus card. Uh, and let's go find your bag. You know what? I think we put you up top is what we did. Here we are, Alexander Hewitt. Wow, lots of cards in there. Sorry about the tough round there, though. Let's get you a label. Oh, do we not have Hewitt? Oh, here it is, Alexander Hewitt. Are you married? I'm married to Mary. What's that like? What's the married life like for you, Mr. Cheese? <laughs> All right. After Alexander, we have Nicholas, Nicholas Jarek, Nicholas and Gemma Jarek. We have no bag. First order. We would like one Blue Sky Stream, one Battle Styles, and one Star Wars. Okay. So we are on the last box of Blue Sky Stream now. Sadly, we have tons of Towering Perfection, which means everyone wanted Blue Sky Stream and no one wanted Towering Perfection. Okay, here we go. Now, he also wanted what? So, a battle style. Here's the battle style. And a Star Wars Galaxy. Star Wars Galaxy. Coming to a Pokey Universe near okay. you. Here it goes. Mr. Nicholas, are you ready? Nicholas, it is your turn. Nicholas J. One, two, and three. So you got one pack from three different sets. That means that your luck is spread out pretty thin. Let's see what happens. Oh, you do get lucky. You pick up a Rayquaza V. There you go. Paul Kanye. <laughs> okay, Rayquaza V. 
on the battle styles you get, just two hollows. Now, from the Star Wars Galaxy, you, you always keep all the Star Wars Galaxy cards. That's how Star Wars Galaxy works. Because I think it's cool to have all those cards. And I don't actually know much about Galaxy Bulk. So here we go. We got Luke and Yoda. The X-Wing Fighters. The Evil Emperor. That's right. He's evil. The ATSTs. The Jawas. Here's Han on Dagobah, which is an idea they had, but they never did it. And then we have George Lucas and I don't remember his name. What's his name again? Grand Moff Tarkin. <laughs> All right. There we go. So that is your Star Wars packs. No sexy Leia in the Star Wars pack, unfortunately. All right. Very cool. We're going to get you a bag now, Mr. Nicholas. Your first order, huh? You should mark Fates Collide as sold out. I thought I did. Give me a second. Yeah, Fates Collide is marked as sold out, everyone. You just have to refresh your browsers to see it. It probably didn't... Oops, I just hit back. You probably haven't seen it because you got to update your browsers. I think that's how it works. Nicolas. Jara. There we go. You're going to go in the end box. Next up, we have Mitchell Galvez for Chilling Rain. Okay, for Chilling Rain. One, two, three, four. He also wants an XY Evolution. That's pretty pricey. And two Star Wars. Okay, two Star Wars. So this is for Mitchell Galvez. Mitchell, can we just call you Mitch? Hey, Mitch. Sneep. Mitch, I know all your friends growing up probably called you Mitch. Sneep. And sneep. Pull Darth Maul, mister. <laughs> Here we are. Good luck to Mitchell. He's got Rock Ruff. Cub Fu. It's Cub Fu. Here's Kakuna. And Dyna Tree. That is a cold round of chilling rain. How about the XY Evolution? We got Polyrag, Ratata, Vulpix, Electabuzz, Machop, Dugong, Charizard, Spirit Link. Nah, I'm sorry. That is a cold round of XY Evolutions as well. Whew. That's a tough round, man. How about these Star Wars packs, huh? Here's the canteen. Looking pretty canteen-y. What is this, by the way? This is like Luke on the neck of a monster. Yeah, I don't know. I'll read that more carefully later. Here's Hoth. Stormtrooper on an iguana. Wasn't this an actual thing in the prequels? Here's Chewbacca. Chewbacca family. And your sticky card, the Death Star and a cartoon Star Wars. <laughs> Alright, so that was your first pack of Star Wars. Pack number two. We've got a nice R2-D2. Here's a C-3PO. Here's a Yoda. And here is a Lando Calrissian. Wow, those all looked really clean. Star Wars Galaxy Checklist. The Dr. Droid. Now, this might be a sexy one, is it? No. No. This is just the early concept for, look at that. He's got like an open-ended tail here, huh? Yeah, that's just the concept for uh, Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> Interesting. There we go. So that is for our friend, Mr. Mitchell Galvez. Mitchell, 
Mitchell, that's a little bit of a tough round this time, huh? And Mitchell, you got a nice large... Oops, there's Marvin Leon's bag. Mitchell, you got a nice large bag this time. Let's see if we can put you up top somewhere or maybe on the side. Yes, so it looks like, Mr. Mitchell, you're being moved up top. Cool. Now we have Dave O'Callaghan. Oh, Dave. Hello from the UK. I want four Star Wars, four McDonald's. Last time I ordered, both Darth Vader and Pikachu came in the next order after me. <laughs> I hate to hear that. All right, so he wanted four of these, right? Oh, Dave. Oh, Dave. One, two, three, four. He also said four McDonald's. Okay, McDonald's. Do I got Spaceballs? I watched Spaceballs more than one time. It's a great movie. Really had me laughing a lot when I was a little kid and I watched it for the first time. Do you know, as I got, I turned into an adult and I didn't find the jokes as funny the second time. Okay, here we go. So Mr. Dave O'Callaghan, good luck. This time you'll pull the Darth Vader. Sleep. Sleep. There we go. And sleep. All right. Dave. Here it goes. You've got a cover art. A cover art. <laughs> a cover art. Another cover art. R2D2 covered in weird bunnies. Uh, Akbar. <laughs> Akbar's training or something like that. Luke and the Cantina guy. Okay, so the first pack is a little cold. Boop. Pack number two. Pack number two is Darth Vader cover art. Cover art. Cover art. Cover art. You're getting all the cover arts, man. Another cover art. Han Solo. Woo. Bounty Hunters. I don't think we see this one very often. Star Wars has given me the chance to contribute something to an already established and wonderful concept. Woo. Where are those sexy Slave Leias? There's one really sexy Slave Leia card, and I feel like it's better than the others, and it really doesn't pull all that often. What do we have here? Here is a cover art. Cover art of Luke and Leia. Another cover art. The Evil Emperor, Boba Fett. Early concept of Yoda. Early concept of Luke Skywalker and the worm. Oh, let's put these back in. Boba Fett. Put these here. All right. Fourth pack. Now, you know what's going to happen, Mr. Dave. This is going to be a cold one, and then the next pack is going to be the hot one, right? <laughs> I'm just teasing. All right. So we got Luke on his home planet. Oh, no, they said this was like a gift card when they were moving in California or something. See, look, it says Hollywood back there. They bought their own studio or something like that. So here's Return of the Jedi, Revenge of the Jedi. Here is Luke and Han on Hoth. Male bonding. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is kind of a male bonding. The beginning of the, uh, the, beginning of the episode movie. Han Solo and the Graphite. Getting saved by each other or something like that. Oh, no, the Chewbacca. It was just Han saving Luke. That's all it was. All right. There was no full art in there. Sorry about that, Mr. Dave. But how about these McDonald packs? You're being, you're being for real. It will be the next pack. It's wigged. <laughs> it's wigged. 100% wigged. <laughs> Sleep. All right. What do we got here? We've got Cyndaquil. What a lovely Cyndaquil. How many ghost packs you have left? Uh, you know, Casey, I can't answer that question, Mr. Casey, okay? Next pack we have, oh, the Charmander. The Charmander is the second best pull in the McDonald's series, okay? 
Nice. There's Charmander. What's this? We have Litten, Litten the Kitten. All right. Okay, there's Litten. And finally, we have Score Bunny. Look at this Score Bunny. You got all fire types. How cool is that? Damn, dude. Which ones is he missing? <laughs> Four fire starters. So that was for Dave O'Callaghan. He says, I have a bag. Let's go find Dave's bag. Dave, are you going to be up top, Dave? Let's see if Dave's up top. Dave O'Callaghan. He's missing the little black dog. The little black dog. Do you think Shining Fates will go up in value? Um, It will, but it'll take a lot of time. It'll take a lot of time. Okay, Dave, we're done with your order, and we're moving on to Patrick Hammett. Patrick Hammett says, I'd like to snipe one pack of Blue Sky Stream. If there's no hit, keep the hollow. Sounds good. Patrick Hammett then says, I accidentally said box. I meant to say pack. Well, it looked like he said pack in my version. All right, so one Blue Sky Stream for Mr. Patrick. Woo. Sneep. There was a literal ton of Shining Fates printed. They printed it into the ground. Just remember that. Cold. That's true. But, you know, they probably did print a lot of it. They also printed a lot of XY Evolutions. And look at that now. XY Evolutions is like $700 to $900 a box in that range. Crazy. And that only took five years. That took five years, and it jumped that much in price. You know, that that's actually sealed product outperforming the... Uh, what is it, like the S&P 500 or the stock market or whatever? And I would say for the 10s, there could end up being a lot of 10s. Maybe be careful and think about think about the value of, uh, you know, the PSA 9 modern card versus a black label modern card. There's a huge difference between those two grades. Okay. We are all caught up after Patrick, so I'm going to refresh. How long have we been streaming? 200 minutes? 207 minutes. 10 months ago, Evos were like $5 a pack. Yeah, so everything eventually becomes rare. And, you know, there's sets that have lots of cards graded in it, but the cards still have some value. It's, it's all interesting to me, like how value is determined. It's stuff I think about. You can still get Evo at Costco in the three-pack Pokeball set. What? Everyone holding on to everything. That's true. Everyone's like, if I just hold on to sealed product, I'll get rich. Everyone watching Rudy like, oh, I'll be the next Rudy. Oh, man, that drink is good. Okay. So after Patrick Hammett, we have Mr. OSM, who would like five more crimson. You got it, OSM. Crimson Invasion has returned. One, two, three, four, five. All right. OSM. Let's see what we get. One, two, three, four, five. So, Mr. OSM, let's see what we can pull for you. We've got Sea of Nothingness. Here's Chinchino. Type Null and Low and Geo Dude. Pillow Swine. And finally, Mischievous and Silvalli GX. There you go, Mr. OSM. Silvalli. That's right, so Valley is in the Crimson Invasion collection. Oh, so Valley, stop being such a drama queen. Yeah, Elon Musk uh, says the same thing that I agree with. 
The trick really, in my opinion, is just to collect whatever it is you actually enjoy collecting. Next up, we got Mitchell Galvez, six chilling grains. And you know, if everyone just did that, then the price of things will basically be determined by that rather than a bunch of investor types trying to predict the market. You know what I mean? Just invest, just buy whatever it is you're really enjoying. And one day that will decide the value of that stuff. So Mitchell, Mitchell Galvez. One, two, three. I have a feeling that a lot of people do not collect that way. And it shows you that uh, the majority of people care more about money than the actual uh, the actual hobby of collecting. Now, I'm not judging you guys for that because I understand everyone has a hobby of collecting money. You know what I mean? It's kind of a universal thing. Nobody's going, you know what I don't want? I don't want money. I hate money. You know, very few people are doing that. So everyone's got a universal hobby of getting rich. But I'm saying that, you know, you're just going to enjoy this more if you actually collect what you like rather than pulling your hair out thinking you're going to predict the market tomorrow. You know what I mean? It's almost like the stock market. You're so smart and so clever and, oh, how could this fail? And you know what I mean? It, it definitely does fail sometimes. And uh, so you just kind of got to choose whatever it is you really like or believe in. Pack number three is Ghastly and Blaziken. Look at this Blaziken. Beanie Babies are the future. You collect Bitcoins. <laughs> There's Blaziken. All right, you can collect anything except for Bitcoin. Oh, man, another Boobany. Wow, look at that fancy Boobany. How much for one cheese? I collect fossils, gold, silver, pokey, poke in your mom and coins. <laughs> Here's Deerling and Inteleon. And finally, we have Karen and Articuno. Look at this Articuno. All right. Kaka! Galarian Articuno. I like to call her Milk Duds. Wow. Here we go, Mr. Mitchell. Great pulls, Mitchell. That was a hot round. Much better than your previous round. Boop. Augustus Bushman says two XY evolutions. You got it, Augustus. Oh, Augustus. One. And two. Oh, what do we got here? We've got... Magikarp. Oh, just one Magikarp on pack number one. That's a cold pack. That's right. Even Evolutions has cold packs. Pack number two. Onyx, Magikarp, Staryu, Tangela, Charmeleon, and Mega Pidgeot. Now, this pack is a lot hotter. Just because right off the bat, you've got the Mega Pidgeot. You know, Mega Pidgeot's going into a clear sleeve. He looks pretty good. How about this Charmeleon? He's pretty close, but he's a little thin on the bottom left. He's going into a deck sleeve. Yes, the deck sleeve does kind of mean that I don't expect you to grade the card. That's what the deck sleeve means. Don't consider it a pre-grade, though, okay? All right. Mega Pidgeot. So that is for Augustus. Mr. Augustus. Here you go. Thank you for opening some Evos. Evos continue to be one of the most popular sets of all time on this channel. People just can't get enough Evos. Mitchell Galvez. He says four Star Wars and one Blue Sky. Four Star Wars for Mitchell. One, two, three, four. All right, four Star Wars. Long stream, mister? Yeah, it's going on pretty far. What do you guys think? It's time to wrap up, right? Two. Three. And four. Woohoo! 
My, get, my bag is going to be heavy now, says Mitchell. I think it already is. We need a Darth Maul. That's right. But I don't think he'll be in here. So here's Luke and Leia. So we're getting cover art cards. Cover art's the evil emperor. Come on, sexy Leia. That's Han and Graphite. I need some way to grip these cards. There we go. So this is a Slave Leia card, but you only see her face. You don't see the rest of her body. Miss Carrie Fisher is no longer with us. It's very sad. You guys remember that? When she passed away, her mother passed away right away, right after her daughter. And that's how you know that people can actually pass away from sadness. Really tough. Here's R2-D2, C-3PO, Yoda. Uh, we have Lando Calrissian, Star Wars Galaxy. Carrie Fisher, I think she got into a lot of drugs right after she became famous and wealthy. I think that happens to a lot of celebrities. And I think it shortens their lifespan. All right. Did they not make Star Wars cards in the 70s and 80s? There's some really, really, really old Star Wars cards out there. Uh, I can look into those too if you guys would like, but I think those are ex pretty expensive. Uh, where these are just, I can do $5 a pack on these very easily. Here's Luke Skywalker. So they're a little, they're like a cheap, cheap fun. And there's actually some cool pulls in here. You know, those full arts, if they grade 10, I could see them going for over $100 as a 10. Especially that Darth Vader one. Damn, that's cool. The Cantina and this guy, what's his name again? Jabba the Hutt's Major Domo and Right Hand Man is a human-like alien with two head tails that can be waved in ob obeisance whenever it's necessary to placate the boss. Fortuna, oh, his name was Bib Fortuna, was designed by stop-motion animation ace Phil Tippett and drawn here by Nilos Rodis Jamero. A Twi'lek by race and spy smuggler by vocation. Huh. So cool. You know, we really uh, fell behind in our stream time when these first arrived, these Star Wars cards, because we were reading each one, and they're fun to read. So every every uh, card has a little story like that on the back for you to read. Here's the cantina, and there's 140 cards in this set. Oops, my bad. I dropped your cantina. Whoops. Well, if it makes you feel any better, it was already kind of mucky because it's the first card. <laughs> There is some residue and sticking on these cards, very similar to Pokemon, but actually not as bad as Pokemon at all. Like, these are coming apart very, very easily. Stormtroopers, Chewbacca. What do we got back here? The Akbars. So what is this one called? This is called Young Akbar Schoolmates Struggling Together with the Finer Points of This Difficult Training. Wow. So Young Akbar Education School. Two Lukes. All right. Very cool. So that's for Mitchell Galvez. You guys will notice no Sexy Leia's came out and uh, no Full Arts. Where are those Sexy Leia's, man? Mitchell. Mitchell Galvez. Yes, Mitchell, your back's very large. If you'd like, we can get you shipped. What do you think? What do you think, Mr. Mitchell? Why he go to the dark side? Who went to the dark side? Put that away. What is this music? This is, this is Pokemon music? Can I send my sexy Leia card to CGC? You cannot unfortunately do that. However, you can send it to PSA when they open up their cheaper grading services. And we'll keep an eye on PSA and see what happens. I've always wanted to try coca leaves, says King the German Shepherd. What? So what do we got next? We got Mr. Cheese who says, cut a champion's path. Oh, very interesting. So Mr. Cheese, we're gonna cut a pack of champion's path. For those of you who have joined in late and you didn't see it, we have a new pair of scissors, the Great Destroyer. This guy has already cut through, well, if he cut through a pack of Shining Fates earlier and he's cutting through this, that's another $24. So tonight alone, he's cut through about $90 of boosters. This card, or this scissors, the very first thing we did with it was cut through a metal card and cut right through. So now we can cut through any pack we want. 
I thought that would be a fun thing to add to the channel. Okay, Cheese, and you cut. You actually did cut a full art. That's full art grapple locked in there. Not Charizard, but uh, grapple locked, still kind of nice. Holy. Cheese, you are a card cutting fiend. I'm going to update this card from 66 to 90, which is the total amount of cards that have been sliced by those scissors already, which is insane. Now we have Nicholas Jarrett. He says, one more Blue Sky stream. You got it, Nicholas Jarrett. Jarrett. Mr. Nicholas, let's see what you pull. I was thinking of ordering one of those. This breaks. I called the Popo. Ooh, it's cold. I'm so sorry, Nicholas. That is a cold pack with no hits in it at all. Not even a hollow. Giovanni Castillo says, a Yugi ghost? I don't have a bag. You got it, Mr. Giovanni. There we go. Cutting cards is a human right. Burn all the books. What? <laughs> Mr., you missed my blue sky pack, says Mitchell Galvez. Oh, well, Mitchell. Let me grab you a blue sky. Sorry about that. Mr. Mitchell, let's see what you pull. So we pulled this from a different area in the box. And you pull also a cold pack. I apologize, Mr. Mitchell. Was it just the one pack, by the way, Mitchell? Let me just double check, guys. Yes. So, Mr. Mitchell, it was a cold pack. I apologize. Now, Giovanni Castillo. You pull... Dragoonity, Salaman, Great Fowl, Resonator Call, Evil Thorn, and Artifact Durandal. Sorry, man. No crazy Ghost Rare Snipe. That goes to Giovanni. How does Cheese always cut the good cards? <laughs> Here's Giovanni Castillo. Uh, the reality is he does not always cut the, uh, the good cards. Just the other night, he decided to cut a pack of Shining Fates, and it was just two hollow cards. And that is actually far more common. Uh, but you know, if you cut a lot of cards, you will eventually cut a nice card, and that is what has happened tonight. He cut the Suicune, which is ridiculous. Christopher Ryan Lane says, four McDonald's and one Darkness Ablaze. Mister, I'll ship tomorrow if that's okay. Does that sound okay? Would you like me to ship your bag out? You want to ship probably after that stream? You just tell me after that stream tomorrow that you'd like to ship out. I'll get you taken care of. One, two, three, four. Yeah, Cheese says, what are you talking about? Most of the cuts are cold. Exactly. That is the truth, actually. Okay, what do we got? Snip. Snip. Okay, for McDonald's. Here's Rowlet. It's Rowlet. He's so pretty. Look at that pretty little Rowlet. Mail doesn't go out on Sunday. That's true. Here's Turtwig. That's why I'll be hand delivering the mail to you guys. I got all my airplane flights booked. <clears throat> Squirtle and Pikachu, now that's a good pack. Squirtle's one of the top four pulls. And you got a little non-hollow Pikachu, which is nice. Oh, right. We don't do that here. We, we tear the pack. Totodile? Look at this Totodile. Lovely Totodile. And Delcaddy Eternatus VMAX. All right. There we go. Very nice. Now, see, I would love to have a machine that does this. Is that, is that glue? I'd love to have a machine that uh, packs these cards up. And I could probably then buy custom printed paper from a, a paper company. Yeah, I'd love that. It's too bad. I need to find out how booster packs are made and start making booster packs. And I'll make all kinds of custom booster packs. It'll be fun. So Christopher Ryan Lanes. 
I have a bag, Christopher says. Let's go looking for it. I just don't know how it's done, to be honest. And if I, if I knew the machine I needed, I would probably just go buy the machine. Here it is, Mr. Christopher Lanes. Thank you, Christopher. Kitty jumped down. Is she wanting out? I think Kitty wants out. So no more orders, if you guys don't mind. No more orders. I need a fresh. You can use the curling iron to steal packs, mister. The curling iron? Oh, mister. Let me go get my curling iron. <laughs> King the German Shepherd is sad. Sad. That's too bad. After Mr. Lanes, we have an order from Jack Gray, who says one blue sky stream. Jack thinks he's coming in with a sniper rifle. Let's see what you get, Jack. Sneep. And you pull, you do pull a Reggie. How nice. Jack Gray, where did we put your bag? Do you remember? Are you up top, Jack? I can't remember if Jack's up top or if he's in the overflow. Uh, it's hard for me to reach the overflow at the moment. Uh, we also have a Mr. James O'Brien who says one more ghost. Okay, for Mr. James. Oops, James O'Brien. Sneak. Good luck, James O'Brien. This one has Son of Alon, Mine Mole, Gear Town, Guy Jantas, and Phantom Knight. It's Geo Fu says, damn, I wanted more too. Yeah, we're shutting down for the night. You should, you could have ordered it a little earlier, uh, but we're definitely shutting down. I've been live for 226 minutes. I'm only supposed to be live for 180 minutes. But we went extra late. It's 5 o'clock and the sun's coming up. So it is definitely time to shut down. Is my pack shipping? Says it's Geo Fu. Your pack would only be shipping if you ordered live shipping or if you made a request in the Please Ship channel and then waited for your turn. You, if you made a, a post in the Please Ship channel, you'll know that it's your turn because I'll actually send you a message, okay? Keep the hollow. Thank you so much, man. Now I don't got to find your pack. You know, the reason I can't find it is because of these big stacks right here. I think your bag's over here. That's why I suspect. I could be wrong about that, but we got these tall piles and I don't want to try to reach over them. I paid for live shipping the other day. Well, then it's very, very likely that your cards are on the way. And if you paid for it yesterday, uh, your card might not be on the way. Some of those went out and some of those did not, but they were uh, everything before then is already out. All right, so let's see. I'm technically supposed to be off because my uh, in-laws are here and I'm supposed to be hanging out with them, but I've been working every day anyways. I've done plenty of shipping. And, uh, okay, we're refreshed, now. I can see there's no more orders. So we, my pack is still there. It says, it's Geofu. All right, Mr. Geofu, if you have any problems with shipping, be sure to contact me on Discord. I'm going to be wrapping up, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. It's been another great stream. We opened tons of cards. It impresses me every time, and we're going to keep going strong every night. See you guys later.